Hello, welcome to THC Show. I'm your host, Neil Magnuson. This is the show where we talk about THC, you know, truth, hope, and change. On the show today, we'll have 8 out of 10 Glenn from Canamatch.ca, as always. Join me for the 420 session. We'll also have a special guest uh, with us for that session. That'll be Sterling, the professor from, uh, from Saskatchewan, is going to join us. So that'll be awesome. We'll have our uh, Healing Wave CSP update. And, uh, you know, talk about a little bit more to do with the... You know what's going on with us uh, with this uh, having to be before the courts and all the rest of the things going on this is overdose awareness week this is uh, I don't know why we would not want to be aware of overdoses every day of the year as long as the uh, friends and family are dying but uh, this is a week set aside to really talk about a little bit about uh, friends and family dying uh, it's been going on uh, at way too fast a rate for the last several years as a result of the poison drug supply and uh, people that are addicted to opioids and, and these other street drugs that are, are dying at this uh, this terrible rate uh, because the the supply is, can't be trusted and these are dangerous hard drugs that they're doing. Of course we here at the Cannabis Substitution Program and the Healing Wave have been uh, providing cannabis as an option to the people on the downtown east side for five and a half years now. And uh, still we're trying to get uh, some sort of official recognition for our efforts and uh, and would like to be able to have a store and offer these services from a storefront. It's a battle that we've chronicled on this show for a long time. Uh, this show has primarily for the last two years been the, the quest for a community-based uh, low barrier cannabis store and uh, still we're trying to achieve that. Uh, it's, a, it's a long journey that the uh, cannabis substitution program and that we've been on but uh, more recently, there's a lot, of re lot more reasons, uh, despite just the overdoses and the deaths that are going on. And that is, is that even the government stores that had been providing access to people who don't want to purchase on the underground marketplace um, are now also having a lot of trouble due to a strike of the union workers. Uh, here in British Columbia, we have stores that have closed, lots of them. There's a lot of uh, missing stock from their shelves. A lot of people have been laid off. And it's really concerning a lot of people who were, were wanting to use the legal marketplace and, uh, and now find that that's not really an option for them either. Uh, this same thing has been going on in Quebec for a long time. Uh, there's been uh, you know, labor unrest, if you will, amongst the cannabis uh, workers there in the legal stores. And uh, we'll see where all that shakes down. Meanwhile, while the government system is proving to not be reliable and to be able to be shut down at the whim of the workers and the unions, We've got St. John's, New Brunswick, where they've recently raided 14 so-called illegal dispensaries and, uh, and attempted to put those places out of business. Um, it's just ludicrous. I mean, don't they realize that it won't be too long and their stores are going to be out of stock or out of, out, out of work because of a strike that happens there or something else that happens to that, that limited uh, mono loppy that they have going on there? Uh, no, instead they're just uh, raiding the dispensaries and trying to close them down. Even though some of the comments made were that uh, a number of people in New Brunswick uh, preferred to go to those illegal stores because the prices were better and the variety and the selection was better. And I would, I would also add that probably the quality was better as well. People that are uh, providing for dispensaries uh, have always been compassionate growers that always cared about their product. Uh, as opposed to what's going on with legalization, where primarily the cannabis is being produced by large organizations with huge, huge greenhouses whose motives are all about profit and who really don't care that much about the product as long as people are buying it. So the, the underground marketplace for dispensaries has been a place where people with serious medical need have been able to go for a long time and have some faith that the products that they're going to get from those dispensaries are going to be good quality products. And the same cannot be said for the government stores right across Canada. And, and, you know, I guess that's okay for Mr. Trudeau because his stores are not medical. And by their own definition, these are recreational stores. They are non-medical. They don't just say recreation. They say actually non-medical, which is both of those are kind of ludicrous because recreational is medical for one thing. Uh, there's really no way that you can, you know, imbibe cannabinoids and not have it uh, supplement your endocannabinoid system and probably help you sleep if you're not sleeping well or, you know, whatever it is that ails you. That's the job of our endocannabinoid systems is to go in there and make sure that whatever's not right gets righted. 
And the way they do that is with chemicals that are created in the human body that are exact mimics to the cannabinoids. So for people to be thinking that they can go to a government store and buy some cannabis that has a, a profile of cannabinoids and ingest that and not get medical value out of it, well, you know, I, I think they're getting some medical value out of it whether they want it or not. And, and as for recreation, well, recreation is recreation. It's a subset of medicine. It's what we do after we've worked hard and expelled a bunch of energy and we need to recharge ourselves and reset. That's what recreation is all about, is resetting ourselves for the next task that we have. And that is absolutely medicine. It's preventative medicine because if you don't do that, then there's chance of burnout and injury and all sorts of other things that happen when you don't properly recreate before you go back and have another session of work or whatever it is that you're doing. So for the government to think their stores are non-medical, well, they're not very accurate about that. They're not particularly medical. I'll give them that. If they're not offering high-dose edibles to people, then they're not particularly medical at all. And there may be some suspect with some of it about irradiation that's going on with many of the LPs. They don't all have to irradiate. That's good to hear. In fact, uh, I just spent uh, the weekend with some growers and talking about some things, and actually some LP growers as well. And I was assured that uh, the one in particular, a craft grower, uh, does not use harsh chemicals to kill microbes and is not irradiating his cannabis. He keeps his room so squeaky clean that uh, his, his cannabis uh, tests properly for microbes and it's not an issue. So that was really good to hear that there are some people in the legal industry that care. And I know that must be true because there's several people that have come from the legacy market that are part of the legal marketplace now. And we always knew that those people would be wanting to do good things within whatever space they're in. So that was an example for me over the weekend of, of someone who cares, that's, uh, that's managed to get himself a license and is producing cannabis for the legal marketplace that uh, he's proud of, uh, would smoke himself. And, uh, and isn't using irradiation or heavy chemicals to kill the microbes. But that's not typically the case, especially the cannabis that's coming from the big operations where they're, uh, they're pretty free to use these things and they do use them because they don't keep their room squeaky clean like this other friend of mine does. But uh, the whole thing is just ludicrous, right? Like the whole thing is just in insane because there was never a problem with microbes on cannabis in the first place. It's not like there's, there's an issue because there's all these microbes that are killing people. And, and in fact, there never was a problem with cannabis in the first place in the underground marketplace. There was a huge, huge underground industry going on before legalization. It was estimated to be somewhere between seven and nine billion dollars just in British Columbia here. Uh, hard to estimate, for sure. So much of it was very, very well placed underground, out of sight. Uh, people would never admit that they've got uh, you know, things growing on their property or whatever. And so it's really hard to know how much was being produced here, but they estimate seven to nine billion dollars a year. That's a pretty substantial amount of money. More than that, it's a pretty substantial amount of cannabis that's being consumed by people. And there was never a time where the government had to make an announcement, a public service announcement, that, you know, watch out for the brown marijuana, you know, watch out for this strain, or watch out for something that's coming from this grower. There was never anything like that because there never needed to be anything like that. The, the, the cannabis that was in the marketplace was all pretty damn good. Uh, it might not have been, you know, quality as, some, as, as all of it, but I mean, there, was, there wasn't really a problem. There was never a problem. The government did not decide to legalize cannabis because the cannabis that was being consumed by Canadians was hurting those Canadians and, and, and it needed to be regulated and it needed to be sold out of government stores because the other supply wasn't safe. That was never a thing. That's not the truth. And, and so now, you know, I've, I've heard some of these, uh, these new legal owners talking about how they're, they're really concerned during the strike that they're going to lose customers to the underground marketplace and then these people won't have access to the same safe cannabis. Well, I think they can get over it. I don't think it's ever been a thing. There's no hospital boards filled with people that, uh, that have been, uh, you know, caused cancer or liver failure or whatever, there's nothing like that at all. There are no chronic cannabis users uh, wards in hospitals. That doesn't happen. Uh, it certainly happens for alcohol. Uh, it certainly happens for many other harsh, uh, harsh uh, things in our environment. Uh, there's a lot of problems in our hospitals with alcohol, for example, with liver failure, with cancer, with numerous other things. There's now new studies that have come out, new uh, guidelines have come out here in British Columbia about uh, what is an acceptable and safe level of alcohol to be using. 
And uh, two drinks a week is the safe limit of alcohol. Um, anything more than that, and you're looking at possible cancer risks, possible liver risks, uh, you know, other health risks uh, along with that. Uh, I think most people can handle more than two drinks, drinks a week, and I think that you can live a pretty long and healthy life having more than two drinks a week. But, you know, based on the toxicity of the, the substance that we're talking about and what it actually, its actual effects on the human body, that's what uh, the health experts are saying these days. Yet that stuff is readily available, advertised all over the place. Uh, it's not an issue uh, with respect to anything to do with the uh, people's having access to that. You can go and buy as much whiskey as you want, uh, tequila, you name it, load up, uh, fill that shopping cart, you know, they'll have boxes for you at the door, they'll help you load it into your trunk, away you go. That's that for that. There aren't even a whole lot of warnings anywhere about not drinking all that stuff at once or not having too much of that stuff at once. It's just, you know, you can go buy all you want. People know by now, right? We're a, we're a savvy alcohol society here. We all kind of understand where the limits are and, and where, you know, what's going to hurt you and what's going to not with respect to drinking too much, right? Other than we you know, all, none of us thought, I'm sure, that only two drinks a week was going to be the limit until you start hurting yourself. But, you know, that's alcohol. Then there's commercial tobacco. Easily, readily available all over the place, sold in gas stations, grocery stores, right next to schools, doesn't matter, it's all over the place. A few warnings on the package that, uh, you know, people with all uh, cancered up mouths and, uh, you know, it's going to kill you early and it's got some serious warnings on there in tiny fine print that I'm sure none of the smokers ever read or look at. But there's some commercial tobacco out there, easily, readily available in the marketplace. Hell, you can buy bleach, pesticides, lighters, all kinds of dangerous stuff in the environment. But your government cares so much about you that they're going to make sure that you don't get any access to high-dose cannabis edibles. High-dose cannabis edibles, the one thing that people that are using for medicinal purposes really need. And anybody that would be using cannabis to get off of hard drugs... And we're going to get into that a little bit on the show today. Well, no, you can't get that. You can't get high-dose cannabis edibles unless you can get a doctor to support your use in that. You can go, in a, go to admit to a doctor that you've got a problem that you don't want to admit to him because he's the one who got you the problem in the first place. He's the one who took you off that stuff in the first place. And actually, if that's the case, you're not going to be able to talk to him at all because they just won't talk to people like that anymore. They drop them as patients. They, they block them. So... The whole idea that the government is going to block access to high-dose cannabis edibles in a marketplace full of all of these other poisons is what? I don't know what the word is for it. I wish I was just here able to come up with the right word to describe exactly how stupid, ridiculous, corrupt, evil, wrong, hurtful... You know, is there a word that puts all those things together? I, I guess maybe there's a few, horrible, but no, you know, it's, it's worse than that. It's worse than all of the words that you can come up with. This is wrong on so many levels. It's not just wrong because people that need high-dose edibles and would access them to get off of hard drugs can't get them. That's pretty wrong. But what's really wrong is that the reason they can't get them is because people that are taking money from all of us calling themselves our public servants are condemning people to death to protect the interests of some greedy corporations that don't want cannabis sold cheaply, don't want high-dose edibles in the marketplace because they want to make money. That's the worst of this for me. The level of corruption involved in in the government actively blocking access to what is a life-saving medicine for many it means I'm living in a world that I'm not happy in at all. That, uh, you know, I feel like I'm living under the, the, the thumb of some terrible, terrible pharaoh. A dictator who militarily took over our country and has a guy stationed with a gun right outside my door and they're listening to everything that I say and I wouldn't be able to say any of this stuff. But I feel like that's what I'm, the, the, the place where I'm living. They've just got it so well figured out here that a guy like me can have a show like this and can go on and on week after week after year after year and talk about the corruption that is involved in our personal plight trying to save people's lives with cannabis because it works. 
That level of corruption is hard to deal with. So, um, hopefully, let's, uh, should I check even? I don't even have this ready to check here. Oh, I still got to talk for a couple minutes, eh? Because I really need the 420 break right now. Because all this stuff is extremely depressing. I'll even take a moment to, to, to light a, a joint because, you know, I don't want dead airspace, but, you know. <coughs> so this being Overdose Awareness Week, yesterday, CBC had myself, Dr. MJ Malloy, and a, and a client of ours, Brian Carlisle, a, a medical cannabis user for many, many years, in studio for an interview. Um, it's about bloody time, isn't it? Uh, maybe now things will get talked about. Maybe now there'll be more. I hope you all go and look at it. It was uh, with Gloria Makarenko yesterday afternoon. I think it's a great segment. I think it really nails a lot of what we're talking about here. Dr. Malloy talked about the studies that they've been doing for five years that, have, that are all showing that cannabis is effective for helping people with respect to their opioid use and their, their other hard drug use. I don't have the statistics here in front of me. I, I encourage you to go and look them up. But a good percentage of people that had cannabis in their systems had a lot less of those other hard substances. And that coincides with the reports that they were giving. That as long as they have cannabis available to them, they're using a lot less of the other substances. And many people have, just, have managed to get right off of those substances. And that's been our experience with the Cannabis <coughs> Substitution Program here. It wasn't very long that we started handing out cannabis to people in the form of high-dose edibles that we had people coming and telling us that they weren't using those other drugs anymore. That if we were going to be there regularly and have what they needed, then that's all they needed. And that continued to grow. And it continued to grow. And now we're five and a half years into that project's beginning. And so many people, we have 268 members on our end that have been rescued from this poison drug supply because they managed to get off of the hard drugs. And the real trick to it all is, is, is withdrawal. Cannabis helps people get through withdrawal. Withdrawal assistance with cannabis high-dose edibles is one of the best harm reduction solutions that there is. We've been demonstrating it for years. We have all of this success. Dr. MJ Malloy and his five years of research coincides with our five and a half years of doing this project because we were one of the subjects of his research. He had his researchers at our our program when we were there interviewing people and that's how he came to understand the good that we were doing. Health Canada just needs to do the same thing. Ah, 419. That's cool. We will take a little bit of a break and talk about other things. But it was also good to have Brian Carlisle with us there at CBC because he's been fighting to get proper access of cannabis for 20 some years. He's a chemo patient, one of the longest lived chemo patients in the world, over 21 years of taking chemo drugs. And what does he accredit his survival and, and thrival to? Because he's literally thriving at this point in his life. It's all about heavy doses of cannabinoids. And without our program and our, our project here, without the healing wave, he doesn't have proper access. He scrambles for access. He called us a lifeline. And we are. So that's what's going on. And uh, at this point, it's 420, which is awesome. And as always, we bring on Glenn Wells to come and talk to us about uh, everything. Oops, sorry, sir. No, oh, don't be sorry. I Just be happy. Your strap there. Just be happy. <laughs> always be uh, happy. How yeah, are you today? Good. How are you? Pretty good. I brought you guys some white Still truffles a little bit. today. Oh, is that what you're smoking? Is that one of those? Yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. This is the white truffle. That's the white oh, yeah. truffle. Several earthquakes on a regular basis going on here in Vancouver. I know. Hey, what's Not going sure on? what's going on. Oh, oh, hey, God. look, here's another one. Oh, we're we're having a problem here. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, this is from one of the winners of the Mom Cup this weekend. So this is right. uh, the Kingsman crew. Uh, we had a lot of fun at the Mom Cup. Oh, we? we did. We did. I'm just going to show Speak. a little bit of this, bud. You guys can check him out on Instagram. There, I put the... Uh, the link in the comments there. So speaking of which, um, before I go any farther, I want to bring on my co-host from the Mum Cup, uh, Mr. Uh, Sterling, the Professor yeah. Wild from Saskatchewan there. From and Saskatoon. my good friend. And, and our your good friend, good, of course good he friend, is. Yeah. Wait, friend we're all friends? Well, we, no, we, we love you. It's, oh, it's more than friendship. 
It's more than friendship. <laughs> Sterling has been doing what he you can. You gotta bring your chair too, yeah. Oh, we're good. Oh, Neil, the production crew here is awesome. Yeah. They even carry chairs. Well, I'm not. I'm not too happy with the hair and makeup people. They, they even quit today in the middle of it all. They said there was nothing they could do anymore for me. But other than that, rogue. Other than that, we've got a good crew here. <laughs> good afternoon, Jay Ross. <laughs> and Jay, Jay Frost yeah. was there too. Yeah. There he is. Well, but we didn't quite get to hook up with Jay Frost no. like I thought we were going. Well, I did. Yeah, I, oh, I, I, I got well. We, we kind of sent him. Well, a you got to videos. watch his show or something. No, but yeah, 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 yeah. But we kind of sent him a couple one-minute videos. So, uh, Jay, you're there, and I'll tell you from my end. Uh, you know, these uh, stoner events are awesome because half the time you don't have a clue what you're doing. And uh, I read my itinerary to say that we were roasting you. <laughs> 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 so. I thought we were all going to get on the line there and, and form a little group, and Mike Rita was going to lead us all in a roast of uh, the Monty Frost, and I was going to be like, you know, are you the full Monty, are you the half Monty, you know, what, what kind of a Monty are you? And, uh, well, I had some material, I was, you know, Yeah. and so then I find Asia, like just a few minutes before that, I'm like, hey Asia, we got this thing coming up, we're going to roast Monty, and she says, roast Monty? No, no, they're roasting me, he, she yes, says. Yes. <laughs> and he did, but because we saw, we had to rush to hope. But oh, he did. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Good yeah. for you. He he had a um, a picture of her when she was blonde, and he called right. it the M and M moment of her life. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So well, I wish I'd say I, maybe I can go back and find it somewhere, but I never have. Oh, uh, it was. Kind of stuff. Well, uh, I don't know if the live video is up there anymore. Oh, they uh, are still uh, up. The, Jay Frost is up. Yes, Jay yes, Frost they, is there. The, yes, the, the the videos are still there. Uh, you, they, it may say that it has ended and it doesn't have a picture of it, but if you touch it, the video comes up. Oh, that's how it is. Yeah. Isn't yeah. It? I checked okay. it earlier. Yeah, I, I was like, where is it? <laughs> so just just like all all things go to hell when the, the uh, cannabis stores have to close down. Yeah. Um, we had no internet there, basically, or nope. very, little very little, because they were putting a pipeline through there, yep. and they had taken down the towers. So yep. it was really difficult to get connected and, and do things. So I know that uh, Sterling and Asia, you took off to, to Hope. With me. With you. Yeah, oh, that's I, right. You I drove, drove them. Because right. I, I, told, a, a, I a, got you to drive. Asia got to ride the, the 420 train. Because I was going to drive them. Asia said, get me to Hope as quick as you can. Yeah. I'm like, all right, jump in. And she goes, and Sterling is coming. I'd say, I have one seat in my car. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and she right. says, uh, I was the one she says Sterling, I'm sitting on your lap because you're not sitting on my lap. And I'm like, <laughs> well, maybe I can find something different here. So there you were, of course. And Glenn is like, the guy that you can always turn to for just about anything. I want you all to take his phone number down, and if you have any problems, <laughs> call him up. That's because right. yeah. he'll, he'll come and, uh, and do whatever that. it is you need at any time. And, 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 uh, and, you know. and I'm going to put my couch on Airbnb, and you guys can come sleep where Mike Reed has slept. It's going to cost days. you a little bit more because uh, you know Mike was there, and those stains are valuable. <laughs> <laughs> stains and smells. Eh? Wow, well, you know, these comedians. What can I tell you? They leave, they, so they, that they was awesome. Mark. For sure. Uh, uh, it was yes, really nice course. having him there for three days. I was very honored that he wanted to stay there for three yeah, days. Yeah, that, that was very cool. That was very nice of him, yes. Yeah. Love you, buddy. Love you. So, yeah, you, you two and Asia went off to Hope and, and did the show there from Newfoundland. Yeah. And then uh, we were all back at the farm trying to figure out what to, how to, you know, nothing was working. There was a lot of chaos with respect to that. Uh, it actually took quite a bit for the, the production crew there to get that live stream out. They had to reduce yeah. the amount of pixels they were sending it out at. Oh, really? Uh, did, did, oh, yeah. that's what they had to do. Well, that's yeah. what happens when you're running on a 25 megabyte satellite connection, right? <laughs> okay. uh, 25 megabytes. 25 oh, yeah. megabytes up. Ooh. I know you were right in there, you know, doing yeah. what you could as oh, well. Wow. Well, I used to be, I, I, a lot of people don't know this, but I, I used to be a data signal technician, right? So that's, that's what I did for a living is, is I worked with satellite So signals. take Sterling's phone number as well, and if you ever have any trouble with technology, <laughs> he'll... He'll tell you no way, man. Frost says, says, yeah. <laughs> Jay Frost says there was a great group of people make things work in the face of adversity. Yeah, that's and what we, we do, isn't it? We raced down there. I was doing 140 in that little car. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, but, but it, it can do oh. it. It does 250. So. Oh, 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 Official Kingsman crew. Oh. Man, you guys go check those guys out. So, uh, oh yeah, they were great. They won, uh, you know, first place with the buds yeah. and stuff. We're gonna go over the list of, uh, of, of winners. the winners that yeah. happened there, uh, coming right up. Yeah. This wasn't it, but Ben, you know, isn't this beautiful stuff? Here? Oh, Who look at that? that. Who's is that? Well, that's nobody's that uh, you guys. Uh, no, no, we know. Yeah. That's Nobody one of our. Know. This our is one of our grower. suppliers here. Our local grower. Um, yeah. A local grower uh, at the Healing Wave. 
Uh, we're, we, we have some of the best cannabinoids uh, available because we have people that really look, care about look us. This ash. But they don't just care about us, they care about the people that we're helping out because this isn't for me. This is for me to help other people get access to it at somewhat affordable prices is the best we can do. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so that's what we're doing. Yeah, the cup was a blast. Oh, that's great. Uh, I thought there was no roasting really being done at all until, because, you know, I didn't know and I couldn't see nothing. Until the Philippines. And we, we tried to keep the show alive there at the, at the, at the space, so <coughs> I wasn't watching nothing. But, uh, so then Mike Rita's going to do the headlining thing uh, Saturday night there. And it, it, he says he's all about the roast. So he's telling me that this is what it is. It's just, you know, he's all about the roast. Yeah. So I'm thinking, oh, okay, that's what happened. So they, they, they've now transferred the roast from, uh, you know, Asia on Monty's show to Asia with, uh, with, with Mike. Mike. And he's a brave yeah. man, if that's he the did. case. Because, he did. He roasted you know, when, a few of us. When I had to think about, uh, you know, roasting a female, I was like, I got nothing. You know, I, <laughs> I got nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, those people have feelings. Dude. Uh. Dudes don't have feelings. You can pretty much say whatever you want. You know, they're going to let it slide. But you know, what do you say to a girl? You don't want to hurt her feelings. Mm -hmm. So I was, you know, I thought that that's pretty brave. But then he didn't just roast Asia. He roasted everybody. Yeah. He roasted us all. Yeah. And he did a hell of a good job of it anyway. So. You J-Mac got in on it. Here comes that joint. I oh, gave him the mic and he immediately oh. went right, right oh. for my throat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, that's a quick exactly. kill, you know? Would you rather die in pain or a quick kill, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, if, if, if your skin nice. wasn't thick before, it, it should be afterwards, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. That's the point. If you take it any other way, you're not doing your comedy right. Uh, That's right. So, yeah. I thank, uh, thank you to Kingsman crew for the bud today. So thank very you nice. very much. Yeah, even, even I've got one of theirs. Uh, what is that, white truffle? This is what you got. I was uh, quite yeah. impressed by the uh, the variety that those people oh, have. Yes. Uh, you know, oh, man. And next week, I'm going to be bringing some Smiths. 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 I, I, will, I will be smitten. I think okay. it's S-Mints. Not with me. Smiths, but well, no. I'm already smitten yeah. with you. <laughs> Why do you think I keep come, having you come back and hanging out with me? <laughs> you had no idea, did you? <laughs> he did well. I love everybody. That's all I'm telling you. We're also smoking everybody. some weed from Saskatchewan, too. Everybody. Are we? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Where, the real, where the real growers live? I mean, I'm, I'm only saying some, that. Some real growers live. <laughs> I know the best ones came here to BC, and that's why we got such great BC bud. Well, some but, of them. But some Saskatchewan's them. still got a lot of good growers, generations of growers. They, uh, you know, some of them decided to have families there, and you know, it's good because I like smoking their weed. So, great. Wow, Shout you got all the best growing. advantage of everybody else, and that's that huge sky. You know, you got the big sun there great. all day long, and that's why uh, Saskatchewan. Great. And if the, anyone tries to steal my plants and run away, I can see them for the next two days. <laughs> see that little speck over there? Sick them. Sick them. Go get them, boy. Bring me my weed back. Oh, uh, uh, eh? uh, you guys. I need uh, this ashtray closer, then it would uh, be fine. Yeah, that might be work. And then I got some beautiful, beautiful diamonds uh, to, uh, this week. Oh, there really was such good, good product there. Oh, man, oh, you man. guys got to see this diamonds. Okay, so there's a nice jar of diamonds. These are monkey grease diamonds. I, I smoked grease monkey. Monkey. Yeah. Gre Oh, grease monkey? Grease monkey. Grease monkey. Sorry, I'm sorry. I just smoked a really good joint from Kingsman Crew. <laughs> well, I think monkey grease, but uh, uh, I, 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 as long as no monkeys were harmed during the making of the grease. I smelled it before. It oh, smells, it smells just nice. as good the second yeah, time. Yeah. Me, oh man. I need some. <laughs> uh, what are you doing there, sir? I'm gonna bring oh, up the uh, winners of the mom cup. Oh, I sent it to you under my name in uh, Messenger. Yeah, I know. I'm, oh, okay. I'm just bringing it up. Yeah, I'm slow. So, okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, you, you're, I'm, you're, you're, I'm not doing anything moment. else on you my know, my phone right now. I know. I'm not. Yeah, no, I'm not too. Yeah. In my phone there, there are some things that we are going to change about future events. Uh, one of the things, as you brought up, you know, the internet and whatnot. So, uh, for next events, uh, especially for VIP and staff and whatnot, and especially for sound and video, uh, we're going to have a dedicated satellite uplink. Right. Uh, that will specifically be dedicated. Well, well who would have anticipated, done. really, that, that the pipeline going through was going to mean there was no internet internet at the last minute? Well, we were right minute, next you know? to the Well, there was no right? data so, so, or anything. Yeah, no I know. Data, so. Nothing. So, you know, all these things, you know, this was actually, in my opinion, one of the best cups for all that was, would happen without any incident. Yeah. There, yeah. there was very little problems, with very little complaints about anything. Yeah. Um, but there was that. But who could anticipate that? But every one of these is just practice, right? Yep. Yeah, every right. one is just practice. Yeah. And as you practice, you get better and better. 
Uh, the Prairie Cup is coming up next weekend. It's yeah. going to be the tenth time that they've done it. Yeah. Jeff knows what he's doing. He's got her down to his science. I'm sure they're going to have a blast there. So it's all just practice. Every time we did a 420 or did a cannabis day with Cannabis Culture, of course, we'd sit down and do a, a debrief at the end of, you know, what did we learn? Yeah. What do we need to do different next time? And, and that's what it's all about. But, uh, yeah, this one actually for a, a piece of property that could have caused a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. um, you know, th really, there was a, a lot of uh, potential for people to be perhaps well imbibed yeah. and wandering, sort of dancing yeah. to the music. Yeah. And the ground was not as flat as it, it could no. have been. And it, it, there was some danger in that. But there was no incidence of that. But if you, you, know, you, if wood you had seen that enough. property before they cleaned it up. You I can imagine. Been, you would have been amazed. I it can was, imagine. Yes, because there was just stuff parked there and get just left there and stuff like that. Almost 10 years of it, and they right. really cleaned that property up a lot. Yeah, no, it, it looked great. Way. I, like, uh, regardless of some of the, the smaller hiccups and whatnot, we had bathrooms, we had, you know, we had, play, uh, we had indoor places, <coughs> where there was there's shelter. Where there was shelter for everybody, yeah. right? Yeah. They made sure everybody got a breakfast if they wanted it. There yeah. was the hamburgers and dogs available all day that yeah, week. And those. speaking of dogs, there was a lot of people brought their dogs there. And that kids, was awesome. Too. There's a few kids. There a few kids. It was great to see yeah. Talia and Halden. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah. yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful event, as these ones always tend to be. And this is like a festival, you know, more than when they're in town here, more than they're just at a venue. Yeah. This, because... Everybody was sort of camping on the same space. You were there 24, not 24 3 yeah. with people. And, and there's a lot of love there. Was, a lot of good friends really brought the uniting, a lot of new together. friends being made. Yeah. Uh, these events are great that way for sure. And then this one was, was a very good one in that respect as well. So mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to more yeah. of that. This Kingsman stuff. Is, is amazing. You know, yeah, I, I'm sorry, great. I'm feeling bad about leaving the I didn't even put any shatter in my joint, which I usually do every week. Did, and, did uh, they pay him more than us? Because no. Because he's no. plugging him a lot. I know. I, anyway. Wow. Who's I, plugging who? What? Yeah, man. Yeah, we're a Kingsman. You just like the product, and I'm, I was just wondering. I'm, I'm very impressed. I just thought they the might product. have paid you more than, than they no, paid us. They got, no, you guys <laughs> got, got more than You I, got I, double, I, didn't you? You yeah. got double. I bet you you got double. Double trouble is more like it. Oh, wow. No, but he's got really good weed. He does. Yeah, well, yeah. that's why he won. You should be yeah. over this list now. That now, almost... now, now he's one of those people that you talk about charge more because it's connoisseur. But from but what, we, what we're seeing, yes, it's, it's well. You know, I got two I, joints I in my hand now, right? Yeah. And Neil, help us. We're, we're, <laughs> well, he's good we're, we're drowning Anil. over here, Neil. He probably had a help. good. A good oh, down my, way here. Well, you got to try this oh. one, Truffle, buddy. It's well, really... announce the winners, because I judged. But oh, I yeah, yeah. Oh, the... oh, I show you. Oh, you were, you were online I'm judging oh. it? Did oh, you? I smoked all the flowers. Did oh. you watch any of this online? Like, no, I didn't. Okay. I mean, and, nothing came and, up. And what? Nothing came up. And it didn't show up in my feed. Yeah. Oh, and because what? Asia's feed went down. It, it, it actually was coming through... YouTube. Ken, the producer guy YouTube, there, some, on his YouTube channel, Future Cannabis, where he had uh, when he went YouTube cannabis. live, and he had eighteen hundred people. Future Cannabis, but it wasn't Asia's stuff, and uh, yeah, because because Asia didn't and, have and the. Uh, who did you pick before we announced the winners? What number? Number five. Number five. I did number, too. Number five and six were the same. But grower. I said six was uh, also I, good. The whole I thought so. Those oh, were my favorites. Yes, yes. Yeah, and that that would be Kingsman. That Three way. got a little that's point for flavor. That's uh, what that's what we're smoking right now. Oh yeah, then I know. Yeah. So yes, you. They, I, they, see, won, I they did win. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I know. Change your mind now? No, no, no. So, <laughs> so I never, I never got a list of uh, which winners were which numbers. Oh, uh, no, we only got that by hearing them talk. Right. We were not, There was no list. So I don't have that. No. That's not what I have for you. No. I have uh, first, second, and third place, and then uh, you know which, who won that. Yeah. Um, but I don't know, and and. I, we don't so know what the numbers were. Number so, six so, and number so five. Number six and number five were one and two? Yeah, they were both games. So on this yeah. list, when it comes up, uh, Turp Fire for number two. Oh, why? Uh, Turp Fire's... Um, that is not uh, no, Kingsman. No, that, that's that guy that had that big brick of right. ash. That's what I thought. Then. Yeah. But they seem so to be homies. I only seen, see the Kingsman on here in first place. Yes. Yes. For Buds. Okay, yeah. so he was number six, and then uh, Turp Fire would, would have been number five. Oh, that's what you're saying, yeah, and, and it wasn't sure. the same grower. Oh, and it wasn't the same. I want to tell the truth yeah, here. Yeah, try to get sure. to the bottom of things, right? Um, so yeah, for the bud category, I got Kingsman number one, Turp Fire number two, and Cheap Kush. Cheap Kushes. Yeah. Cheap, cheap Kushes. 
Yeah. Yes. There's a Z at the yeah. end of the Kush. So cheap Kush is all one word. Type that into your computer and see what comes up. And uh, in the bud box. category. Yeah. Uh, in the extracts category, I got Sweet Leaf, Wholesale first, Only, and second, Dog Dabs, three. number three. Yeah. So Sweet Leaf, number one, Wholesale Only, number two, and Dog Dabs, number three, in the extracts uh, category. For the diamonds... Uh, wholesale only, wholesale only, and then the underground in third place. So uh, wholesale only takes first and second. And I'm very the, impressed with wholesale only. There was good concentrates there. Oh, there was, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, in the hash category, we've got uh, number one was Med Medman. Yeah. And uh, number two was Turp Fire again. And number three was Medman. So well, first and third go. going to uh, Medman. Nice. And uh, Turp Fire takes second place in the hash uh, category. For edibles, it was Le Patriot. I try oh, to say that in this best of French Le accent. Le Patriot. Oh, Le Patriot. were amazing. Oh, oh, my amazing. God. They laid me out. Do you not remember the end of the awards where I was sitting in the chair <laughs> giggling like a six year old schoolgirl? By the end of the event, by the time we were doing the auction, which happened just before the first <laughs> the, 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 the prize winners were announced, that was the talk of the place, was those cookies, man. Yeah. It had really been the talk of the event that the edibles, uh, the, the, the La Patriot. I'm just taking a picture of the people. And then yes, Matt yeah. Hatter uh, with his gummies there took uh, number two in the edibles uh, category and Babette's took number three. So La Patriot. Uh, oh, that was an awesome. Uh, you Le know, uh, uh, <laughs> Mad Hatter number two and Babette's number three. Okay, so For rap artist, oh, uh, I was, uh, you know, sad yeah. to see that I wasn't included in that list. I thought my version of O Cannabis uh, could have been, been considered yeah. a rap, you yeah, know, any yeah. kind of, because as I read at the end, I hear people saying it's a rap. <laughs> so I always figured I, you know. Really? That's what you heard? I said, I have, I've had enough of this crap. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, it's you, hard you to, obviously it's need hard to, get to your hear hearing hearing check. Yeah, 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 it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all the singing. It's, yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> well, and that's, and that's what Mike said about me. He correctly pointed out, I'm sure. That uh, for anybody that hears those canvas <laughs> yeah, for the first time, I mean, uh, they're blown away by it. I think I spent, you know, a lot of time on those words and it, it really worked. <coughs> but for those of us or those of you in the community that have heard it, uh, you know, it's he's like, oh, my God, he's doing it again. Yeah, I know. But what I told him afterwards is, I was, think about me. Yeah. I'm right? the one who has to do it all the time. Yeah. I, you, know, well, you know how many times I've heard that now? More than anybody else, I'm sure. <laughs> Yeah, well, on agree. Sunday, I, I almost lost my voice. On Friday, I, 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 was for a I lost my hearing. Cause this is, I don't know, man. I, but even, even, with, without your, nightmares now. even without your hearing, um, you know, um, as he correctly again pointed out, uh, you know, I obviously, uh, everybody thinks of me as their old drunk uncle, right? Like that, I'm the, I'm, who doesn't drink. Yeah. That's what he said. Oh, yeah, that was great. Yeah, so, that was good. Oh, I'm, never, be, I'm never going to forget that It needed one, to right? be said, I'm sure. Yeah. It needed to be said. Uncle Junkie. So. If you guys want to see the whole Mike Reader thing, just check out Glenn <laughs> Wells' page. Uh, you'll find it. It's on there. It's, yeah. it, it's hilarious. We have lots of fun. With all due respect to Mike Reader, though, he was great, but really landlord stole the event oh right? he was landlord was good. and that's so that why we're going to a barbecue tonight right? Right? we have yeah, a barbecue uh, you know the landlord, the landlord has decided to share a little bit of his land with a few of us yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a great and, view uh, up there we're going to be up oh, high it's nice. it's boy weird. are we going to be up high yeah and it's really nice up there it's already a show day it's a, in any case it's always a day at the hill we have to test our products all we the time, do right? yeah what can i say and now we're going to go Visit with landlord. Yep. Oh my goodness, the bar has been set very high. I know. I've got some very high. Yeah, me those, too. Uh, speaking of well, high, I, I, with diamonds in it. Some weed, weed with, diamonds. with diamonds and weed with shatter. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So right. so maybe we'll have to give you a ride home or something. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not, who says I'm who says I'm imbibing in any of that? <laughs> um, I just smoke my we're, joints. We're gonna peer pressure you. You think so? Well, oh, we're gonna yeah. try. No, no, no. no it's no, been no, tried no, many no, times no. before. No, we won't need peer pressure. I'm a disciplinarian. Senior now, we can't do that. No, the oh, only thing you can do is if you have oh, that was if you have two <laughs> other guys of <laughs> similar of similar girth yeah. for, for my legs. Yeah. You can whoa, pro, you whoa, can you can sit down on you know one each arm one each leg and force me. Uh, but other than that, skinny, skinny. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Huh? Well, nobody other other than you two could take an arm. Make, I'll make tell you. Make sure you don't wear your hug me T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> right? We had Mike Reedy yesterday tried to try to take out Neil. Oh, oh, and the day right? before. And, 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 and the day before. Right? He just keeps kind of hugging this keeps, guy. Bear hug. Both. I mean, I thought he liked me, but apparently not. I mean. 
You know, he killed me, almost killed me at the, at the glass <laughs> gathering. Trying to kill you love, man. At the Trying glass gathering. Love. Yeah. At the glass gathering. Oh, right. Oh, I laughed so hard, man. I'll tell you, my cheeks hurt me for days. <laughs> that was a great that. evening. I mean, uh, holy uh, shit. Mike he is, is a great. funny man. He right? is oh, a and funny speaking man. of glass gathering, we also had uh, Patrick Frolico, otherwise known as Redbeard. Beard. Yeah. Right? Are we allowed to call him that anymore? I, I, or are we supposed to call him that now? I forget. He said it doesn't matter. It doesn't. I, I, well, I love I that his, guy. His friends call him Patrick. Some yes. of us call him Beard. Some of yeah. Red yeah. Beard. Right? Yeah. But. And we also had Leash Glass. He's a famous legend in the in the community right. on the legacy side. Uh, probably on his way to being a famous uh, character within the legal side. Yeah. And one of these days, he'll be one of the gentlemen that helps us all unite, where we can uh, accept what the government is offering us, where the prices make sense, and the people that can't afford it can have low barrier access. And there's no reason for the government to get involved or interfere. If farmers want to bring cannabis to the marketplace in ways that are you know, similar to the other fruits, vegetables, and herbs in the marketplace, then no government should be stopping them from doing that. Yeah. Because that's just ludicrous. Anyway, it is. don't get me going here. We're talking, right here, here. We're talking saying, about like the one cup. of those wind-up toys, right? You put the key in the back and you just crank it until you hear a click and then let just fucking let them go. Well, I know, but right? that's what happens, you know, and it, it, so many of these things are triggers for me. And then it's this ludicrous government that thinks that legalization means that we pay more than we did during Prohibition for a product that's inferior to people that don't deserve the money, while at the same time they use taxpayers' money to go there and, and criminalize and continue Prohibition even worse than it was before with heavier penalties than there was before to make sure that that legal marketplace's uh, profits are protected. It's a protection racket. It's a monopoly. It's completely wrong. Government, get out of the way. Cannabis is one of the, the, the products that is least needing regulations than, than anything else that's out there, except for the edibles and the concentrates, which do require some verbal or written warnings about the possibilities of eating too much of it and what can happen. Fine! Fine. But cannabis flower, this stuff, yeah. growing cannabis, drying out the tops and providing them for people, should be no nothing more of any interest to government than blueberries or strawberries or anything else like that and uh, whatever. And there's a bunch of other herbs that I could mention as well. Many of them that also have some sort of euphoric effect or some sort of, that, you know what, be because it gives you a euphoric effect if you in inhale the vapors, that's reason for government to get involved and tell you you can't have it because it, it makes you high. That's their concern because originally it wasn't about high. Talk about winding me up. It was about people becoming violent and insane. It was, it was yeah, that yeah, it we was. have to use the criminal law, cops with Stop guns, yeah. you know, all these harsh threats and, prep and, and penalties, because this stuff is bloody dangerous, you know, it, it's going to destroy our children's lives, and all the rest of that. And all of that was lies, none of that was true, the opposite is true, cannabis is, is just a, 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 a God-given natural plant, a herb in our environment that we've grown up symbiotically over millions of years and in the, on the, the, the smoking or inhaling of the magical vapors of this plant is simply about a euphoria that helps connect us to each other, helps connect us to nature, gives us insight about all sorts of different things. It doesn't make people violent and insane at all. It does the opposite of that. It's all about peace. It's all about love. Yeah. It's all about Community. just being a free human being in a world where, the, the, where nature has provided us with all of these different things that can help us in our life, that can enhance our lives, and if we learn to use them properly, we can have a great life. Yeah. And if there was a role for government in any of that, it would only be to give us guidelines on how to properly use things if there's potential for some, some problems or harm if you don't use it properly. Yeah. And that goes for roses with thorns, it yeah. goes for sugar that's in plants, it goes for all of these other potentials that are in all of this nature around us. And if there's a role for government, it would be to identify the potentials, to tell us about those, but not to deny us opportunity or, or access, because all that does is create demand, yeah. creates an underground marketplace, protects greedy corporate evil bastards, hurts ordinary normal people. We've seen it all unfold for the last 100 years in Canada. That's the real thing for me. 
we're at a hundred year mark. Yeah, we're we're gonna, coming up you know, to it, right? We don't have that much years. time to turn this over before grand. it's been a hundred years. I think it's so. Uh, yeah, so it's like 1923. Yeah, 1923, early January. A minister named Belling stood up in the Canadian legislature in in Ottawa, and and, and there was already uh, coke, uh, co uh, cocaine was already in the uh, schedule. I believe 1916. And in, in 1908, it was uh, the first ever federal laws against any type of a plant, and that was against the smoked version of, uh, of Chinese opium. And, uh, and from there, here we are, 1923, coming right up 100 years in January. I got my one there. Look at that beautiful piece of art. This came from uh, the Mom Cup. Uh, it was created on site there. This is, uh, I'm not sure. At least. That is. Or at least. I'm not sure. Is that least? That was leash glass. It is leash glass. It is. Wow. She's got dedication and heart, man. Wow, well, she's been really pr producing this amazing art for a long time. I just didn't recognize it because it has uh, how many breasts? <laughs> One, two, three, <laughs> six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. She got a, got a little carried away on there. Is like fourteen, fifteen? <laughs> she's got like fifteen breasts. Uh, a couple more over here. Uh, oh, look at that over there. She's got some on the side on this yes. one. She's got such beautiful creations that are many times the, yourself, the gorgeous yourself. female it's female body. There you go. And the breast part about a female, I mean, the, you know. <laughs> the breast part is the breast. <laughs> That's Excuse a beautiful, me. beautiful one. Leash glass. I, I don't know. <laughs> I've known, known Leash for a long, long time. Alicia. Uh, she used to uh, do her cre creations at the uh, seed bank <coughs> down uh, on Hastings Street there. <coughs> an iconic place that was there for many years, uh, providing seats to people, but it did a lot more than that as well. We had the beautiful lounge in the back with the waterfall, and we had many parties and things there, and we had people making glass and stuff mm -hmm. out there. So Alicia was there. I bought a red beard cup. She's gone on to uh, to make cups for, for different uh, cannabis events that have happened for the Mom Cup in the past as well. And so I had... So I have these tokers, right? You all yep. know. You all know I have these tokers, <coughs> and uh, these are Gibson glass tokers, but they're broken because I'm a klutz, and uh, gravity sucks. And uh, if you're uh, if you're a klutz and you're over concrete, the suckiness of gravity can break your glass. <coughs> we actually proved that at the Mom Cup as well. The what? Gravity? The gravity sucks. Yes. <laughs> gravity, gravity and glass sucks. don't mix. Yes. Gravity, concrete, oh, and glass <coughs> don't mix. And where's you that? didn't see what happened there I, at the I, end of the no, auction there? No. Um, I won't say who because, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't name names ever. No. But we, we had one of our pieces that we were auctioning off hit the floor. Oh. Uh, but uh, there was leash. Uh, there was leash glass. With yeah. the yeah. <coughs> the I porch. can fix that. Right there. I can fix that, she says. Uh, so we gather up all the pieces. And she recreates this most beautiful dab tool. Oh, yes. Oh, man. That, that was, was a dab tool. So, getting back to these, you know, uh, I had one of these that had a big white... I should, I should have brought it for the show. I really should have. It wasn't far away. But I decided that we were three or four minutes from four o'clock, so I didn't do it. But I had one of these that had a white mustache, and that's the one that I was using out in my car all the time. Yeah. I had a, a big white mustache, but half of the mustache was broken, and the stem was broken off there. But it's all I had at the Mum Cup... So I'm using it, of course. I, like, I do take it with me when I have nothing yeah. else. And so I'm using it just casually, not even thinking about it. And I hand it to Redbeard. And he looks at that and he goes, Buddy, I can fix this for you. <laughs> Ray, Ray like, you don't need to live your life like that anymore, yeah, that's man. Right, you know? Ray, yeah. we, you we, poor, poor person, <laughs> obviously. You, know? you, you don't own a torch. <laughs> and you don't have any minutes. skills. You're just lost in the wilderness without a container for the water that you've now found, right? And how long? He goes, and here I am, I can fix that for you. So he did. Yeah. He fixed it for me. Nice. And there I was uh, doing the auction. Yeah. Using my beautiful new collaboration between Gibson Glass and Redbeard Glass and loving every minute of it. And yeah. Somehow I dropped on the cement. Oh, no. So it broke again. Oh, oh no. But there's Leash. Yeah, and she fixed it. Oh, good. So she fixed it for she... me again. And now I've got a, a, a mustache toker that's a collaboration between 
leash glass, the red beard, and the originator Gibson glass. And I just saw that earlier. I'm going to try yeah. so hard not oh, to break it. Is that it. it there? No, this is a different one. Okay. So this is one that, that appeared there out of yep. nowhere yep. At, the, at the mom cup on yep. the table oh, wow. for, of the things that we were going to auction. Oh. Yep. So I uh, found out about that, that yes, this was an item that uh, Asia had put there for auction. Yeah. And I thought, boy, that'd be nice to have. Yeah. And so when it came to uh, the auction, I was outbid uh, first by Glenn. Yeah. And then Glenn was outbid by Sita. Yeah. But these two had a little thing going on there. <laughs> and he decided, and he had told he wasn't going to outbid her. No, nope, because. Because, you know. She was going to donate it back. And so she was going to give it to me, and that's what she did. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, thank you, Glenn. Yeah, uh, no, thank no, you, Sita. No uh, that was a beautiful moment at the cup. I hey. thought uh, it was like, hey, you know, we don't. You need to. Win. And I was like, yeah, but look what I also got at, at the cup here. So <laughs> I, I got double lucky at the mom cup for there you go. for for all you young people. It doesn't mean what you think it means when no. you get old. Uh, you know, getting two of these things at a cup is getting double lucky. Yeah, he he so, was uh, camping with his son, not his girlfriend. Oh, and I didn't get lucky there either. You know, come on, no, no, no. Dad had his own tent. <laughs> Dad had his own tent there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh, uh, I don't know how much people want to hear it. So, you know, I don't like to tell a lot of oh, personal right. stories. Well, that's you know, not personal. But uh, yeah, I did go up there with Dan. It was great to have him there. As always, we've done so many great events together. We've done Shambhala. We did all these rallies for all these years. Dan was like kind of my right hand man for the 420 mm -hmm. uh, rallies and cannabis days. Always been there up early and to help me. Well, not always up early, but most of the time. <laughs> uh, more better lately, or maybe or yeah. But anyway, so what's so, the, what's the name of that weed? Which you know, the one that has that beautiful in the jar? No, no, oh no, this here. Yeah, you yeah. You, you like said this the local here. No, 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 no. That no, is no. the name. Yes, it is. Oh, oh, is, this, oh is that's it? a slurricane. This is slurricane. Yeah. Wow. That is a very beautiful slurricane. Wow, there. that's very nice. Uh, I get to see that in the room growing. Uh, extremely uh, amazing wow. person who's very meticulous and experienced. And slurricane is a uh, indica or it's sativa? an indica. It's an indica. It's an indica. Yeah. Yeah, one of the more popular ones. Yeah. So I guess what I was going to tell you is, is because you alluded to it earlier, and I know no good reason to say so, but I did hurt my rib oh. uh, on the, oh, way, on the, on the yes. Thursday yes. before the cup. Uh, I bent over to reach something off the floor of like the passenger side of the car, and I ended up putting the armrest into the into my side. Yeah, and it's still oh, extremely temp uh, tender there. It's gotten not better at all. Mike Reed, it just keeps. It's a little bit better here. today. As long as Mike stays away from me, <laughs> yeah, it should be all right. Well, he seems to be in Toronto right now, so okay. I, I, I think you're safe. I'm feeling a lot better. Okay, that's good, that's good, that's good. I love you, Mike, yeah. and I know you love me too, and you didn't mean to do it, but uh, he hugged me. Yeah. He's a big guy, and he, he hugged is, me. Yeah. And he, he, he gave me the old uh, Portuguese pat, you know? Ah, ah, right, ah, right away. Ta -ta 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 Oh, so, bad, oh yeah. I know. Yeah, but, yeah, he uh, but then you came along and got him high again. Probably you had something <laughs> to do with that. <laughs> so by the next day, wasn't in we his went. mind at all. I forgot about all of that. Just wanted to hug me again. So there we were. He came here to visit and see what was going on here. He loves you, man. I know. Yeah, uh, same thing, though. That word I forgive bad, him, but man. he didn't do anything on purpose, so he's all good. <laughs> but, oh, man, he hit me again. You know, more of the old Portuguese love. <clears throat> and so... Uh, yeah, I think that's why I had a couple of bad nights. It's uh, oh, I heard no, that. No, it's not. It's, it's, oh, okay. it's just a bad injury. It's just a bad, it's just a bad bruise. And and it's it, it's compounded by me being an old fart. Okay, <laughs> senior stuff. Yeah, and then you know we also got to say thank you to Dabster. Dabster was a big sponsor of the Mom Cup. It's right. right. Do, we yeah. don't, do we have one of those? Yeah, here? we do right there. Look at that. We sure do. Yeah. I've got my lid <laughs> thank you very much, Dabster. I got a Dabster. Sterling got a Dabster. I did get Even a Dabster. Even Mike Reed got it, and uh, apparently you got one too. <coughs> These Dabsters are pretty. Tight. So they're, they're, everybody will be getting themselves do, do, Dabsters. I'll yeah. tell you that. Anybody that's a dabber is going to need a Dabster. Uh, it is. Just, I can demonstrate if we have a pipe because I have the app on my phone. Do you have a pipe? Oh, I think we can. Uh, I think and, we can and, do and what I, you need to do need, here. And I need a torch. Oh, we're gonna. You're, we you're gonna have before. a real demonstration. Oh right? yeah, we'll show people how this works. All right. All right, because I have the dumpster. It's not my son calling again. Oh. <laughs> no, not this time. These things are definitely uh, childproof. We, we, is there a we child in the house? Because yeah. I'm having trouble right, opening. Like there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like this this is the app, and basically, uh, Dabster yeah. is going to be able flap. to go underneath your bowl here, 
after you've heated up, heat up with your torch and tell you what the temperature of your bowl is. All right. So this is a, a great new uh, step into the future here. Uh, it had to happen because there's a need for it. If and, you uh, the and stoners up, and, and a need phone, are going to come up with something. So yeah, what, what this little torch. unit does uh, we need a torch. is it connects to the internet, it connects to uh, your, uh, yeah, the your phone there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you have to do it that And way. it'll yeah. tell you the temperature when it's exactly right. Well, you heat it up first. You, you heat it up first. You'll, you'll learn. Now, yeah, also, learn the, yes. the dumpster will turn itself off if you've gone over 800 degrees and you have to reset it. So, you don't want to do your regular heating it up to it's red hot with, with this device. You want to just heat it up and it's going to tell you what your bowl is at. Okay? No, I, I need to turn it on first. Okay. Well, yeah, well, here we go. Did we find it? Oh, yeah. Well, oh, there's power. Oh, uh, no power. What? Yeah, you didn't. I guess it's not charged. Oh. Oh wow. All right. Well, anyways, like we, we, like we said, so you know, demonstration. Uh, I mean, you know, you're sitting here and so you're, basically you're, you're, heating you're, you're, you're heating up your bowl. You're heating up your bowl, right? Okay. To write about where you 15, think you should, right? Seconds, you you yeah. wouldn't do it much more than you you think you should. Yeah. Because uh, you know, if you're heating up your bowl too hot, then it, it, you end up with this. It, it's going to interfere with the life of the bowl. Yeah, and it's going to discolor your bowl. And this will shut down if it's over 800 degrees or maybe a little bit higher. It automatically shuts. So it typically, down. people would heat this up until it's red, right? No, typically, yes, but not yeah. with. You don't want to do that with the dab. Seriously, yeah, you're not you, even going to get it red now. No, because you want your dab to be about 400, 420. So you're going to learn then uh, as you go and as you use well, this Well, maybe thing. that might work, Dan. See, see if that'll work. Uh, yeah. We have some power there. We have power. Dan the man. Power. Thank you, assistant uh, uh, producer power. Dan. Just a bad assistant. <laughs> Does it fit in there? Just a technologically challenged assistant. Senior moment. We have power. <laughs> All right, Is this, that thing, the right this, this thing's broken. Is that the right cord? Maybe it's no, not the right cord. I think maybe the Dan is broken. <coughs> I think Dan gave him the wrong cord. It, okay, it, on, it's in the on, box. Let, 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 the, the, the of right, what accord? The right cord would be in on the what box. what accord? I know, uh, Neil, uh, Neil is asking me for it. Is this the cord that came with it? I don't think so. Oh. No cord. Wow. There is no cord that comes with it. Must be. There, is, there is a cord with it, yes. It's, it's, it's I don't think that's the right one. Oh, excuse me. Wow, we're obviously not doing a great job of showing you the dabster. No, but, no, no, no. That, that, but, that's, that's, only because, that's only because we're not doing a great job of showing you the dabster, not because the dabster isn't a great tool. There we go. Uh, and you know, certainly, uh, all right. Okay, well, now we, did, we need a green light. Yeah. Okay, so, so we have a green light. Charging. Yeah, so, 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 we just so like if that. we push it, will it go green? No, we, not are, we are going to have to wait. We'll wait. We'll we'll wait. All right. right. Yeah, we can talk some more. Well, sure, because yeah. the whole idea is, not, and this is what I was saying. Anyways, uh, yeah. So what you're going to learn is, is that you really don't need to get it red hot. No. And most people would typically get it red hot, and then they let it cool for a bit. Yeah, right? yeah. That's that's the standard operating procedure. And that's where you're going to find out when you begin with the app. You're going to see it. You put it at 800. You're still going to have to wait, but you're going to learn eventually how long to heat it up for, and it so you don't have to wait so long. Right. And also with their app, there is um, different presets for rosin, for diamonds, for extra, like for right. distillate and stuff like that. So they, because we all, there should be different temperatures for each uh, concentrate. So. so if it was just one, uh -huh. you would learn pretty fast kind of where that temperature was at. Yeah, maybe so on your own. Your shatter, he says about 420 and maybe a little bit lower. Right. Maybe, I think 420 was the maximum, he yeah, said. Yeah, 420 was the max. Now, are, the, max. are those uh, recommendations uh, on the on the site, on the yeah, app? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're yeah. actually right in, in the app, I do believe. Yeah. Right? Okay. So, yeah, and you can set your profile so that this way, when you open up your phone and you know that, for example, you're smoking shatter right now, you're going to go and you're going to click your shatter go. profile there and it will automatically bring up the temps that you want your unit to operate at. Right. So material... Uh, so over 451 Fahrenheit or 221 Celsius is too hot. Yeah. Too hot. And anything at 420 is just right. Yeah. Or no, lower. that's supposed to say yes. That yeah. fooled you. Uh, oh. Because I don't know. Anything well, at 420... Well, that's what you told us. Where's, where's, you you where's just really like that number, don't you? Yeah, that's what I was doing. So yeah. it's actually between... 392. 392 and 450. Yeah, pa pa so 420 is not exactly in the middle of that, but we'll say it is. Yeah, yeah. Anything so around right. 420, a little bit higher than 420. It's, it's funny how that so number just, just keeps popping up. Just a little bit higher yeah. than 420 is optimal for... Uh, 
for most things. And in this case, what are we looking at? That's for uh, uh, shatter? Um, those are for temperature settings. Material is down here. Ceramic, clear quartz. Uh, so I think the other are in, in the, uh, probably the dashboard somewhere. Let's see. Oh, uh, there. Um, your scale. Do you know where the presets were? Go, I haven't go seen back. yet uh, anything. I'm going to go back to my head here. No, no. Okay, so. Yeah. Uh, where was that? In right there. there, yeah. Okay, so scale. Obviously, we didn't pay attention at the training session. The uh, Dabster yeah. put us through the three-day grueling weekend of, of learning every in and out about this machine that we were supposed to present to you. Actually, uh, it was spur of the moment. Uh, oh, we didn't talk oh, to them at all about uh, oh, you know what? presenting it on the show, and we don't know what we're doing. So. We figured out it's probably the information is in the device, and once the device was turned on, that would be our, one of our options. Because so should we try this green button? Yeah, this button right. Right. Here's another video. No, and you'd be, I'm surprised it doesn't just work yeah, with the thing plugged in like that as opposed to just charging. Uh, yeah, it's just an infrared thermometer. Right. Uh, Maybe yeah. unplug it and turn it on to see if yeah. it's just going to oh, juice the power on. I'll tell you, uh, the Dabster was having great success yes. at, uh, at the Marm Cup in, uh, in helping people with their... Uh, with their dabs for sure, yeah. and it was really the hit of the place. But so next week we could do this. We'll probably get it right. Yeah. Maybe I'll even talk to the company itself and find out if there's anything in particular they want to tell us to tell there, There's a YouTube video. I'm a, I don't doubt myself, as anybody who watches the show knows. And I it's what read. Dabster app. Like the, the Dabster. The, uh, this Dabster this feels a little bit like uh, trying to find the mum cup. Yeah. Did you, how, how did you make it there? Did well, we found trouble? out that GPS was telling us to turn left, so we should turn right. It did do that as well? Yes, it did. So, so did you turn left for a while? We did. Yeah. And I kept telling my uh, co-pilot that, hey, I, I've, right. I've been here before, this is wrong. This doesn't look right. <laughs> but we were doing... Don't you to, tell me what to do? I, I, didn't, I said so co-pilot. When, when you got to that, when you pulled off the freeway and you got to that first uh, Mum Cup uh, uh, poster... We didn't there, see a poster. You didn't? No, we didn't see the poster until after we came back uh -huh. and we were going the other way. Then we saw purple, the purple posters, and then we knew. So what we, were we, for. we are, for our uh, um, adventure. Yeah. We came off the freeway, and there yeah. was that first poster, and it's yeah. on the, this log. Yeah. Uh, this square cut log that yeah. they got using as a barrier to this uh, this bridge. So there's a a narrow, relatively new, pretty sturdy looking concrete bridge. It goes over the river, mm. and, and, and you can see that there's a couple of RVs, uh, you yeah. know, in this Most little sure. clearing and that. So, yeah. so that's where we I said, you know, there's a poster here at this intersection. Where is everybody? This must be it. So we went across the bridge, and we drove up the roadways, and there was numerous uh, RV encampments there. Yeah. Many of them had <laughs> been deserted for, for yeah. years, and there was old derelict RVs. And there was the other ones that were there, they'd been there for years. You could see these are people that live there full time. Oh, wow. Uh, and then we passed a few of those, and then the road got uh, a little worse and a little worse, and we pretty much realized after a while that we're just on a logging road that hasn't been used very much ever, and, <laughs> and, and, and this road is a bit too much for some of the cars that would be coming up here, so we would have by now passed cars parked where people were walking the rest of the way in, so mm -hmm. we turned around. Mm -hmm. We got back to the, the road there, and, and we carried on straight down the road, <laughs> and uh, found another sign, another poster, and then another one at the end where the stop. Well, actually, we didn't see the one under the bridge. Why did you call me? Well, that was after a little bit where we had already we got down to the end of the road where there's the stop sign where you went left. Yeah. Well, we went right. Yeah. And then, sure enough, there was another poster in the tree there, and yeah. then there's three so posters you kind of in the trees. And went back on the highway. And and then we kept going. No, no, no. We got up back on the highway okay. because. Because there's that there's a little there's that little road that pulls off there, yeah, right? Yeah. And so yeah, we could see that the posters were there in the trees there. And then we turned on and sure enough there's another one on the porta potty that's right there beside the entrance yeah. to some space yeah. which has three pylons in front yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. But right. an old locked gate where it looked didn't look like the locks had been used for a while. And I right away said, No, it really can't be up there. Yeah. But there was there was no more. So we kept driving down the road, right? It ain't here. So we kept driving down the road. Didn't didn't see that little driveway right there when you first oh, come so around you the corner. By it. And even if if I did, all that was there was one white RV yeah. and that big was the glass shack, which yeah. is like a two story major industrial garage. Yeah, that's it looked there. like an old gas station or something. And that's right? that's all that was there, and then yeah. looked abandoned. 
So I didn't pay much attention to that. We kept on going down the road. Well, you don't get very far, and your only option is this road that has danger signs in seven different languages. <laughs> That's pipeline for you. Yeah, because they're putting in a new pipeline there, and this is one of their staging areas, and they're like, oh. keep out, keep out, yeah. danger, danger. Yeah. So like, I don't think that's a cover for May's Cup to try to just fool the authorities. <laughs> no, but we, then... We probably shouldn't go in there. But, so then we came back... Uh, back up the road all the way to the porta potty because that was the last uh, poster that we found. Mm -hmm. And there was another little access road going up right there where the three posters in the trees were. So we figured, well, this has to be it. This is yeah. where there's three posters in the tree. The porta potty's right there. It's yeah. the last one. So we moved the pylons. And, and uh, I should mention by this time, Steve Payne and, and his accompaniment mm -hmm. are there. Yeah. And they're equally as confused as us. And um, so we say, well, we'll try up here and be back shortly either way. Yeah. So we move the pylons and Dan and I drive up there. We don't get too far and there's two choices and neither of them are any good at all. And I, 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 I sort of turned around and started on this one and went, there is no way yeah, cars are going up yeah. there. Yeah. No yeah. way. And so we turned back around and came back down, I announced to Steve and his friend there that we had found the mom cup, that you just had it to go through the portal potty. Mm, the the portal, portal potty. potty. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I remember that. that. Yeah. Yeah. So Steve, he went and tried the door, but I, I yelled at him before he got there. That there was already, <laughs> already somebody in there, a, a worker from the camp, she had just gone in there. But oh, no, he tried the handle anyway, and oh, wow. thankfully it didn't open. Oh, and, wow. I, and I doubt that there was a portal through there to the mom's cup. <laughs> and then so now we're, we're sitting around, me and, and Steve's friend, and yeah. Dan, and Steve's been gone, and that's when I was phoning you. You see, yeah. at that point, it's like, well, let's get on the phone yeah, here. Yeah, I got a hold of Asia. And so, yeah, so all that, during that 10 minutes or so, Steve had disappeared. And I hadn't really even thought of it at all. I mean, I didn't think about it. If I had, I would have been worried that he got into the porta potty Poor body. Was, yeah, <laughs> more right than I thought I was. Yeah. But, uh, no, no, he all of a sudden appears behind that old locked gate. Yeah. Trying to get over it, but it's all like, he's, it's like one of those things that, they, uh, you know, you got to try to get uh, over to uh, win the prize. And he's yelling, I found it, I found it. Yeah. And he says, you just got to go around the corner. And so sure enough, up yeah. and in we went. There you go. Uh, I thought, uh, you know, Asia should have got a prize for best, uh, you know, um, well, you obstacle get, course. Yeah, thing, yeah. You know? Because that's, there were several people, I'm, we, we heard of two, others. Two in fact, they sent out a few posses to try to find some of the people that were lost. Yes, we did. Yeah. Yes, we did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'd been there two weeks prior and couldn't find the place. But I drove, and like you did, drove right by the place, not knowing that that it was, GPS I, I, said I, I, I did. think it was, it was pretty easy there, to do. Right? Yeah, right? so. it's supposed to be when the GPS says so. you should turn left. Now you're turning right, and you don't know that that building is that actual address. You cannot always yet. trust your GPS. Well, no. there's no data there. So that's why it's They just make up their own mind when there's no data. Yeah, when they're there, yeah, they're, okay, well. They don't have your best interest in mind. Who knows what was farther left than when it kept going. And we're we're using that kind of stuff. <laughs> hey, uh, the the, the, the uh, Google GPS had me driving around Calgary and around and around and around. I finally went, this is nuts. I, you know, stop listening to that story. And the <laughs> girl in the box. Uh, all right, I need a dab. So, yeah, there was all of that. There was some really good music. There was some great music, yes. Uh, Asia never disappoints with music. Did you or either of you experience the um, Saturday night in the VIP house? No. No, we didn't. No. 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 I didn't even go to Friday no. nights either. Did either of you... I, would, I, 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 I wasn't, I wasn't Yeah. Did either of you want to go to the Saturday night? It just didn't? No, like some, I, I kind of was going to go to at least check it out. Right. Or, I, I, mean, so I was hoping somebody knew what was what, what went on there. Nobody wants to talk about it. It's kind of like they all went to Vegas. Well, you know? I mean, we were, we were, we were co-hosting all weekend, so... Um, well, you know what, you usually you know you hear these things, don't you? And, uh, well, I, I hear it. I announced it. Well, but, I, but did you did you comment on it because you didn't see it? I mean, did anybody tell you what the hell happened in there? Because uh, No, no, I, I didn't I don't, really I don't know. No, I, heard I didn't want to know about Friday night, but they told me anyway. I heard that Asia. But, uh, I, I, I know that that uh, there's the uh, some of the rap artists were. I had told the I had announced that it was ladies' night of the right the host right, and, yeah. I, and they went anyway. Uh, well, and they went, and I, it was funny because about ten minutes later, as they're walking by me up to the house, I said to them, "I'm like, where are you guys? Where are you guys going?" And they're like, "Oh, we're going to ladies' night." I'm like, "Oh, okay, you you." 
I, there are things in there you may not want to see, you know, as, as <laughs> we're going, know, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. Hades night, right? Warned them. Oh, yeah, bro, we're good. And uh, uh, not even not even three minutes later, they come, like, yeah. like not running, but walking real fast. Walking back. Oh, hell no. Oh, okay. uh-uh. yeah, hell no. no. Yeah. Oh, hell no. No, we ain't doing that. Well, the main attraction couldn't make it. Uh, apparently, there was an injury to one of his legs. Yeah. Uh, he, he was the the head the head hanger. I mean, headliner. <laughs> head hanger. <laughs> <laughs> At the second uh, mom cup there in Vancouver, wow. that uh, still has people talking, and some of us not sleeping well at night. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> A little PTSD. <laughs> well, you know, I had to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had to announce it. <laughs> See. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, are, there are things you can't, cannot unsee, right? I know. <laughs> right? It just haunts you in your dreams for the next 20 years. Like, <coughs> yeah. I don't I, talk about I that night. I was there, but I was on a bad angle. That, right? I didn't see the... Uh, so because he doesn't show up, and he's he's a portrait painter. Yes, he, is. he paints yeah. people's portraits with his. It is a yeah, P. there's another P in there. Yeah. I wasn't saying it any bar. I, mean, I refuse to say that one. It's a anyway. word. So... Cantankerous you tell Andy Barbie it's just a word. I'm okay, not, Andy Barbie, just sorry. Just forgive Glenn. He's from a different, yeah, different place. Yeah, different climate. Yeah, he's raised, raised differently. Yeah, he's raised differently <laughs> than me. So anyway, he was. He's a, he's, a, he's a painter. He's a he's a some. It's a portrait painter. That's what I was saying. He's a yeah. portrait painter. So, but he wasn't there. So they had to put it out for people just to do selfies. And uh, and apparently they found a half a dozen people that were willing to drop their drawers and do a selfie. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, including J Mac. Including J Mac. Oh man, that was hilarious. I only heard. <laughs> I didn't see nothing. And thank goodness, because he was almost willing to do it again there up on stage at the comedy night because was, of a heckler. I he should know so better. He's our best heckler. Oh, oh that was great. That oh. was great. And he, and he managed to pull it off with No, he didn't word. pull it off. No, 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 no. no. He kept the story no, off. No, he pulled the don't, joke don't. off real good yes, because the joke he pulled off. all of a sudden, you know, J-Max almost got his pants and done. Everybody's like, no, oh, no. We were and all, he takes no, the mic no. and he goes, psych. <laughs> Mic drop and away that, he went. That was yeah, good. That was well, good. and the way that he raced into the house on Friday night for uh, for ladies' night was hilarious because I I was upstairs. I was grabbing a coffee, just trying to have a quick break before I got back on the mic. And I come down the stairs, right, and I open the door, and here's all these people yelling, and there's J Mac, and he's like trying to pull his stuff off. I'm like, what's going on? He's like, I'm gonna do it, and he runs past me into the house, and I'm like, what, what, what? What the fuck's going on? J Mac had that as his dream thing on his right? on his bucket list. Did you know yeah. that J Mac had been given two shots of moonshine before he did that? Yeah, you know he probably needed those two shots. Of I doubt it changed the thing. You know, he always looks like he's had a few yeah, shots. You know what? You know what? If you're gonna do something like that, you might as well kill a few brain cells. It's while the only you're way you get away with it. Right? So the you know, he has a so he's a officer. That's yeah. why he gets, away with, he gets away, with. away with everything he gets away with. You know, who's who's gonna who's gonna put in it? Uh, no, you go right ahead, buddy. You do whatever you need to do for yourself there. All right? Uh, yeah. All right. Oh man, I'm glad I'm not that guy. So uh, yeah, J Mac, what a guy. Uh, uh, you know, the, you, only only surpassed by the landlord yes. who walked in. His timing was amazing. You know, well, in comedy, we, we it's all about time. Him, right? Yeah, but he was showing up on Indigenous he, Stoner time. Yeah, yes. He, right? <laughs> he didn't care that people were saying, hey, Mike Rita wants to, wants to talk to you down there. No. <laughs> he, yeah, I'll finish smoking this big fatty first, he says, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Because he wasn't quite high enough because he was higher than anybody else. He wanted to stay there. and So there he was. He entered the place like that champion boxer with the entourage with the spotlights on him and <laughs> the landlord is here and he makes his way through the crowd to get to the stage and takes the mic and goes, get your skinny ass off my stage, stage you yeah. know. <laughs> and then he killed it. Yeah. It, it wasn't just his usual three or four, you know, I'm not racist because yeah. I watch color TV jokes. Yeah, yeah. He had new material and his timing was great. And yeah, he oh, pulled yeah. it off and then... So Mike, of course, is up there going, uh, well, how in the hell am I going to follow that? Uh, I don't think <laughs> Thank he God J-Mac, it. no, he didn't yeah, have to. No, J-Mac, yeah. Well, he was like, nobody could follow that. And then J-Mac was like, I can follow that, you know. <laughs> so uh, I, think, I, don't, I don't know, I don't do a good J-Mac. I'm glad I can't do a good J-Mac. Oh, that was good because you got the finger in there. I get it. Oh, always. And then mostly video. it was this one. But for the there, So I, up he goes. He says, all right, asshole, come on up here, do your best, you know. And So, yeah, J-Mac bailed out uh, Mike Rita. He didn't have to follow landlord i'll post and a link to the video shit. so they can all watch 
Yeah, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of people watching at home apparently, and they're probably falling off their couches uh, because it was uh, yeah, probably equally as funny at home as it was there. But, uh, <laughs> that, that was a good night of comedy. It was. Yeah. All right, I'm going to yeah. get the link here. Oh, oh boy. So what else do we have fun with at, uh, at the Mum Cup? Oh, the music was really good, yeah. uh, other than just We already touched on that, right? They, yeah. they had the rapper scene, but there was some great DJs there. Yeah, yeah, I mean, no, and they kept us going. They had lots of different music, right? I danced. With yeah. my rib. Yeah. Right? I couldn't help it. You know, I'm on stage there. We've just done whatever. You're also on Forget what it is that we were talking about. <laughs> no, I wasn't on mushrooms at that time. Not till oh. later. Oh, not until later. Uh, yeah, I did them Friday night. Friday and, night. I only, and I only did uh, probably less than two grams. Yeah, but that's, didn't have a, a scale that's enough medicine to loosen you up, man. Oh, boy, big time. I had a, I had a pretty funny Friday night. But uh, earlier in the day there, um, when, when that was going on, I, was not, I had not taken the mushrooms. The DJ just played fucking beats that I couldn't, I, I was just, and yeah, I, yeah, even, yeah, and yeah. I saw rib and everything, it didn't matter. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I haven't been moved by music like that for, you know, a while. I mean, I, I love all the classic rock and that all still moves me and stuff, but to really get me feeling like that felt was really special. And I, I knew at that moment that uh, Asia had pulled it off again with respect to the entertainment that she brings to her cups. And, mm -hmm. uh, that the three happy cats, uh, mom cups, are uh, over the top when it comes to entertainment. Uh, that's for sure. Yeah. So they yeah. had uh, nine o'clock gun there, which was really good. Right. Uh, yeah. Elvis yeah. and nine o'clock gun and those guys. Who played for us at the BC Bud Day? Yeah. And really saved our asses because a few of the musicians uh, didn't show up that day, and they were willing to play for the bulk of the day, and really, it really kept the whole thing going at a really because they're great. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and he sung, and and just before he left, we got him to sing. He did a uh, an acapella like song of uh, how did he sing again? Just oh, before sure. he left, he, he grabbed the mic and he sung one last song for us. Mm -hmm. He covers so many amazing songs, songs that you wouldn't think could be properly covered. He covers and, yeah. and he does it in his own unique style and pulls it off every time. A uh, local artist, he's been playing at our events for a long, long time, and yeah, really happy to see him uh, there. And, there was some great music. There's one band I didn't like at all, but that's just because I'm old. I don't, I, don't know, I don't know who that was, but uh, you know. Who, me? No, Thanks, Neil. Was that you? That was the band. Me. Yeah. I well, told, I told the them band. to turn your mic they, down. They kept on giving me the microphone though, and you. Yeah. Well, and they keep turning it up. Yeah. Like, but before I get it back, I always turn it down, right? Yeah. And then, and so that was you, okay? Yeah, that I keep cranking nice. it up. I want everybody Crank to hear. Yeah, yeah. Was the whole point? I mean, we're, we're all spread out on the side of a fucking mountain, Neil. Oh, right? Was, like we're we're ch trying to reach the masses here. We got mountains to climb, man. Dumb asses could never mountains find the climb. place. The, the dumb asses could never find that place. It was only the smart people that were there. Well, the, 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 the mass, it would have helped. The masses that. were lost up in the mountainside on those logging roads. Probably some of them never to be seen again. <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, no, we only had the good smart people that made it there. It was great. Yeah. And, and I was letting you know when 420 was. 420, yeah. yeah doing the announcement. Would help with the construction. Making me day. sing that song again, Dan. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, we actually really love you for that song. Because I know, that's why I have to keep doing who, it. Dan. Who else sings Who that? knew 17 years ago when I wrote that song that I would still be doing it to this day? You know how Mike Reno feels about Turn Me Loose? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love no cannabis. Don't get me wrong. I'm only spoofing. This is roast shit. Um, I, I've, I'm so privileged and proud and happy to be able to do it any time that I get to do it. Uh, I'll do it spontaneously with just the slightest uh, suggestion. It's not something I hate doing at all. No. I'm sorry that some people, I, I, I don't know if that's true either. A lot of people tell me they like to hear it any time I do it. Yes. But I think we're all just joking. But uh, yeah. yeah, no, I'm kidding. I, I don't hate doing it at all. No, we actually love it when you do. because yeah. And that's the thing. Who else does it? Who else sings O Cannabis? Well, there are people that do their versions of O Cannabis. I don't know where or, or who or what. Well, maybe but I know one time at, at Cannabis Culture, this, this lady came in there and she had 20, 25 different versions of O Cannabis. She had sat up for weeks on end writing oh, different yeah. versions oh, wow. over and over. And she wanted me to pick one and do that. And I, I read a bunch of them and I was like, you know what, I, 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 I'm just going to keep doing the one I'm doing. And she was really disappointed. She wanted me really to embrace one of the ones that she had written. There are other people that have written that. I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure one day somebody's going to write a better version than I, than I wrote. That's okay. Um, and mean, there's probably lots of them out there for sure, too. But. Just like Canada, you just not, don't want to change. That, that's fine. I mean, well, you know, what I, we I, have is good. So, um, 
when I was inspired about all this stuff, right, I'd, I'd been going to pot rallies sound asleep for a few years. Mm -hmm. uh, I would go there, uh, my son and I, we would uh, kick the hockey sack ball around, we'd smoke weed. At some point, uh, somebody would say, hey, it's four or uh, you know, uh, uh, legalized weed, and we'd all go, yeah, legalized weed. And uh, it was just a megaphone that uh, David would bring to these things, and he would talk on it, but uh, I didn't pay any attention really to what he was saying for the most part till he said legalized weed. I was more interested in smoking weed and talking to the other people in our little groups. And I think everybody was kind of like that that was there, maybe, I don't know, but that was my experience. Just for the first four or five years, I really wasn't paying all that much attention to what was being talked about mm -hmm. uh, with respect to history and shit. I don't know why. Um, I did carry around with me a clipping out of McLean's magazine that I had found that uh, talked about uh, what happened back in 1923 with McLean's magazine and the article that was written there, the little excerpts from uh, Emily Murphy's Black Candle book about all the illicit different drugs in the world and her chapter on uh, marijuana, the new menace that okay. was uh, rewritten in McLean's magazine that talked about how cannabis caused people to be violent and insane and addicted and, 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 and you'd die a horrible death and you could never get through the withdrawal and all these things that it said about it. I could almost quote it back in those days. And I carried that old, you know, uh, crumpled, uh, not crumpled, but now getting older and older thing mm. in my pocket for those four or five years and that was the thing that I did at those rallies other than making sure the grounds were left clean at the end. Dan and I would do that every time as well and a few other things but, yeah. but mostly you know what I, what I would do is, is pull out that thing and I'd, I'd take the megaphone and I'd say look I'm not an activist I'm just a mainstream guy but I found this article because they reran it in McLean's magazine and I was like holy smokes, look at the lies that they told yeah. about cannabis back in the day there and I had my little spiel that I gave. But it wasn't until uh, I, David uh, needed my help to put together what became the Herb School because I had told him I'm a carpenter, I'm, an I'm not an electrician but I can do all of these different things and I've got all the tools for everything and i got time on my hands now and I just want to help you with whatever you got going on and what he had going on was this building there and uh, and so in the building and the, the, the renovating of that place over that long weekend that I had off of work when I, when I also happened to have all the right materials that I'd already moved in there and just like do 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 that I had everything we needed and not too much and not not enough and I never went to a lumber yard and we renovated that space in those in that three day long weekend pretty much all, you know to get it ready for people to come and sit in the lounge and it was terrible when we first got in there on that Friday morning. But uh, we never slept, we never stopped. We took uh, safety meetings every uh, 45 minutes right. to an hour. Uh, David had jars of weed with names on them, which is why I was hanging around with him and why I, <laughs> why I had agreed to help him with whatever yeah. it was he wanted to do. You know, yeah. He was the guy putting on the pot rallies yeah. at the, at the uh, uh, art gallery there, but he was the guy that had a backpack full of jars of weed with names on them. Yeah. And so uh, here we were, renovating this space, the three of us, Dan and David and myself, and time after time after time, it's like do, 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 you know, I've got just the right piece of plywood for this particular thing, and there was one of those manifestations, and I had just the right amount of ceiling tiles for the space that we were needing to put ceiling tiles in, and on and on it went, like all through that weekend, it was just creepy, like all this material that had come into my life because I'm a bit, I'm not, I'm not a pack rat so much as I'm somebody that doesn't like waste. And working as a heritage carpenter for a small company within the confines of a much bigger company doing a big project, and this big company routinely throwing away perfectly good building materials, yeah. I would put them in or on top of my van and take them back to the loft that I had, and uh, and Tetris them in there. At that, you know, by the time I got evicted because the lease ran out five people beyond me. I was renting off my boss who rented off a client who rented off somebody else and eventually there's somebody with a lease. The lease expires. I'm not supposed to be there. Get all your stuff out of here. Well, that's when I moved everything into this space that you know David had asked me to help him with just because I also said, hey, I need a place to put a bunch of stuff. All the stuff I had was all the stuff we needed to renovate the place. It was spooky as hell. Wow. It was like, I'm on a journey here that's directed yeah. by the cosmos for yeah. some reason. Yeah. Like this is, this is all amazing. And so all that got put together. It wasn't until there where during these safety meetings every 45 minutes to an hour where we would pick another jar and smoke another strain. We call strain, them union breaks. 
Got to have them to stay safe. Got to have them to work like 72 hours straight through. Yeah. We ordered in food. We never slept. We just, we were so energized by the weed. <laughs> no, yeah. by the project, by, by, the by what, we were, we, were what we were doing there. Yeah. Um, you know, that we were putting together this space that we were going to teach people this stuff that David knew all about, and I was just learning. And boy, did I learn it over that long weekend yeah. by reading The Emperor Wears No Clothes. I highly recommend it. Uh, Jack Herr wrote this book, The Emperor Wears No Clothes, and it's inspired many, many activists over the years, and I'm one of them. Uh, it was that experience there, even after all those four or five years, five years of going to the pot rallies before that, and really still not getting the whole thing about, you know, about what the prohibition of weed was all about, why it was happening, what it was good for, what it all meant at, at such fundamental levels to our, our, our free human beings that we're supposed to be. And I got it that weekend, man. I just I got it by reading The Emperor Wears No Clothes and by being educated by David every step of the way. I would read what was in there, and I'd go, holy shit, really? Wow, and, eh? and David would go, oh, yeah, not just that, but blah, 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 and away we went, right? And I got to Chapter 7. I had learned about how it grows in almost any environment. It's good for all these different products. You know, it's food, it's fuel, it's fiber, and all of that. And now I turn to Chapter 7, and it says... Uh, oh, yeah. Hemp seed nutrition. And I went, oh, give me a break. I mean, I was overwhelmed. I was absolutely overwhelmed. That weekend had been overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And now it's going to say that you can eat this plant as yeah. well as all these other things that it was. Which makes sense. It's yeah. a plant. We eat plants. You know, yeah. It's not that unreasonable. But for me at that moment, because it was all of these other things. You're just like, like another one thing, more. Right, right. Another are, thing. On are you top kidding? Of like, yeah, no, like, not a fucking. Chance, and it's gonna but. put. It's gonna change your diaper and put you to bed at night and send you a lovely bike, right? Too, right? <laughs> like seriously, come on now. Can this be real? Could but it? it went on to say, hey, not just you can eat this stuff. Oh. This isn't just food. This is superfood. The okay. cannabis seed carries within it all of the different nutrients, the fibers, the proteins, the essential fatty acids, mm -hmm. everything that you would need. It's to, to operate the human body in all of the right proportions. It, it, it was so well known, you know, thousands of years ago, hundreds of years ago, and so valued. It's been part of economies and, and all the rest of it. But Buddha claims that or it, is, it is claimed, I mean, he's not here to claim nothing. No. But it is claimed that he lived six years eating one hemp seed a day. Wow. And you can see the transition in, in the man when he went from being that fat guy that sat on the... I've lost 40 pounds. To being that lean, strong, you know, human yeah. being. And I saw that happen to friends of mine. They, they ate a, a strict diet of only hemp seeds, but they didn't just eat one a day for six years. That's that's how myths grow, you know. That's, oh. yeah, you know, oh, it starts uh, out uh, here oh, and really, oh, oh yeah, you know. it was more than one a day. I think it was more than one a day. Oh. But, but if you just ate hemp seed, but just it speaks for a year. to the nutritional yes, value right, yeah. of the product, and you, need, so, you don't need that to tell you anyway. Hemp hearts are good for the heart. Well, hemp hearts are good, but they've taken off the shell. Okay. The shell, if you eat them raw, will clean your teeth. That's why our ancestors uh, had clean teeth or good oh, teeth was okay. because they were eating the shells that were wrapped yeah. around these seeds. It was a staple part of, of the human diet. It was a staple part of the domestic food diet. Uh, all through the developing North Americas uh, throughout the time, uh, farmers, every farm had, had a, uh, from a hobby farm to the large farms, had hemp, hemp growing on their farms. Yeah. They used it to feed oh, their livestock. They used yeah. it for a variety of different things. And Washington alluded to the Indian hemp that some of them had that was good for medicinal reasons, of course, right? The Indian hemp weed, The, the yes. Indian hemp that they all, you know, so there was, there was all that. But yeah, when I learned about the nutritional value of this plant at that moment, like, you know, reading through there, uh, my brain going a mile a minute, probably we were smoking some of the sativa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what three days, right? Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Need another hug here, Neil? No, please. Thank you. Uh, you know, just virtual hugs are fine right now. Right. I got my own little pandemic going on over here. I'm staying six feet away from everybody. Don't yes, that way. Uh, out of uh, arm's reach is what that is. Yeah, right? stay, stay out of arm's reach. It's or you get you a sign and you just not healthy for me. Say, don't a, touch the Neil. That's right. I have a compromised immune system. It's not healthy for me to be in close contact with people. Stay, <laughs> out, stay at arm's length away, please. He might. <laughs> I won't might. hurt you. Don't worry about that. But uh, uh, you know, you I'm, a, I'm a frail old human being right now. So, you know, reading that and with my mind going about, oh my God, you know, the connecting dots in the head there. Uh, three weeks before that, I was living a very synchronistic life at this point, I might add. I was really trying to go with my instincts and, and, and find my flow in things and do what was right for me as a human, you know. Um, I'd had changes, major changes in my life. Uh, you know, I was a married man in the family for a long time and that had now ended and here I was 
you know, trying to find myself and, and become myself, I, w- I would say, I guess. I, I didn't know what I was going to do, but I knew I was going to do something. I was... I knew the universe was prepping me for something. Yeah. I had had an experience working for the Rotary. I thought I was going to be involved in charity work because that's a beautiful place to work where you can go and say to somebody who has the resources, hey man, would you like to share some of those resources? It'll make you look real good and promote your brand. And it'll go to people that really need it. And it's all through this really respected charity. An easy sell. Hell of an easy sell. You know, if you can get an audience with somebody who's got those kind of resources that does, that wants to have their brand improved and mm-hmm. respect for what they're doing, and you can offer him a vehicle to do that, it's a win for that person. So they're going to help you, especially if you have the backing of a reputable organization. So I thought that's what I was going to end up with, was doing the win-win-win thing with the, you get to get your brand promoted, you get uh, we get to have the product that you're, you're donating to us, uh, we get to then give that for free or for whatever, you know, to the, to, through lotteries or other things that the Rotary would do to get it to people. But other, but also to, to just about anybody that needed anything, the Rotary is a great organization. And I was really proud to be helping them do some fundraising. Mm-hmm. And I thought maybe that's where I was headed for. I didn't know. But as it turns out, the following my flow led me to these synchronicities that brought me there that day to sitting there. You know, sometime in the early morning hours of that uh, Monday, you know, so Tuesday, supposed to go back to work, where I was working in the mainstream as a carpenter for this heritage carpentry place. You know, like that thing? Yeah. Because well, apparently yeah. I don't. Yeah. And, uh, Going back? And I turn yeah. the page, and it's hemp seed is nutrition, and I'm reading all about, the, you know, the value of hemp seeds for nutrition, and I'm thinking back three weeks before that, when I went to Ambleside Park in North Vancouver, where Greenpeace was putting on a a demonstration and then had a bunch of booths set up and there was a booth set up there that I spent a fair bit of time with that day with these ladies that were talking about children starving around the world mm-hmm. and it really had a serious impact on me you know that we as a, a society would allow for children to starve to death yeah. where we have the technology we have the ability to be able to look after these children of our, our they're all our family mm-hmm. and so there I was you know faced with that horrific truth yeah that the corporate greed of North America and the, and, the, and the free you know Western world was preventing access to this plant which could just with its seeds alone could help the could, world. could solve world starvation yeah. Yeah. and I was faced square in the nose with that and I thought that was the only reality as I connected these dots that's the <coughs> the picture that presented itself from all those dots being connected I looked at that and I went holy fuck Corporate greedy evil bastards are working to are willing to starve children to death to make their money, yeah. and they don't need any more fucking money. No, nope. sorry, any Barbie, yeah. but this is serious stuff here, <coughs> and uh, and I I couldn't handle it. I mean, that was enough. I mean, I'd had a whole long weekend of educating myself, or and, and with the help of Jack Hare, with the help of David Malmo Levine, and mm-hmm. and all of the history of all of the people that led to that moment in time of sitting there having that experience and the tears flowed and I thought there's nothing in this world that I could possibly do except try to stop that you know this this plant that they're using the criminal law against me and I'd had experiences with the law and in, in cages for cannabis I had all the problems of prohibition so many different things that I did talk problems about in our world of prohibition you know the how prohibition led to the use of other drugs for myself and so many of my friends yeah. because a drug is a drug is a drug and you know it's only a gateway drug because it's illegal <coughs> now, otherwise it wouldn't be a gateway drug at all it's a gateway to good health it's a gateway to understanding how to enjoy a Friday or Saturday night's concert without yeah. getting drunk and, and, and yeah. killing your fucking you know vibe because you're drunk or and you're, killing all you your know, friends or, or your or friends somebody else's and friend waking up with a hangover or yeah. whatever and so yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. it's just such a, a crime against uh, yeah. all of humanity, all of our society, uh, to nature in general, that I knew at that moment, I have no choice. I have to do everything that I can during my, my lifetime now to try to stop this ridiculous prohibition of cannabis. And I'm not finished yet, and I wish I was. I wish I was finished a long time ago. Yeah. But we're not finished yet. We're not we're finished. finished yet. Wait, we got to keep going. Say, it's a long mountain to climb. Well, yeah, and then and there's only one answer for why. 
Mm -hmm. Because the truth is, cannabis is an amazing plant that gives benefit in so many ways to so many people for so many things. And the only reason that there's any trouble with it is because of greedy corporate bastards that are willing to protect their interests, their money interests, and in some cases their control interests. Um, and so, yeah, it's a it's serious, really serious in fight. My life, yeah. You know? crack, I always want crack, control. Crack, that's where the money is. is. Oh. Yeah. oh, still, eh? Yeah. Well, they Who can make money. So far away from you. Yeah, I know. A mile. <laughs> it was almost a mile over there. I know. I heard that. <laughs> Yeah, you, you, maybe, know, you maybe you don't want this one. This one's got diamonds in it. It'd probably make you cough. And that would not be a I good thing. I don't like coughing right now. Yeah, all right. Well, we'll stay away from this joint, okay? It's, uh... It's, um... Diamond surprise with Kingsman. Yes, Diamond It's, it's a tough Kingsman. battle against people with a great deal mm. of leverage that are in, extremely entrenched in making their money, <coughs> you know, and having their interests protected through the prohibition of cannabis. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a tough one. The, there are these powers that seems, I mean, am you know, I just a conspiracy nut or is it true that, you know, if the Prime Minister decides he wants to do something, there's a few people he's got to clear it yeah. first. You know, yeah. I just believe that to be the case. I don't know, but it seems that way. And uh, we need to do something about this, uh, and that's what we're, we're, we're fighting for here. That's what the yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was a good one. That was a good one, eh? We should How keep we going doing? though, sir. How it's 35. Is it? And I've got to meet the landlord at 6. He's going to come down and let us in. So we should. Make sure he lets me when I show up there about 7.20, 7.30, something Message like that. me, call me, you've got my phone number. I'm sure I'll have no trouble getting yeah. in there. All right. So we didn't get this thing to go green. Not yet, but we'll do that next week. Let's just see here. Plug it. Yeah, I was going to say. So we have to plug it. Oh, ta da! So I think we have time for a dab, do we? Do it, yeah. We got time. I think we have time for a dab. Yeah, we'll go to Ailes in. You guys and are, we have a dab are, ready right here, but I think you're having uh, one. Oh, I've got, oh. oh okay. So, really now, before we wrap this up, uh, what we were talking about is the mum cup. Yeah. And we've been talking about the blast that we had there. Uh, it was such a great time. You guys got a little sense of some of the, the great moments that were there. You had to be there to really experience it. And, uh, and so what's coming up next weekend is if you missed the mum cup or if you had such a great time there, you want to keep it going, we got the Prairie Harvest Medicinal Cup in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Yeah. Coming up there. September they still 2nd, have passes available. You can camp there. Uh, there's going to be a whole variety of great stuff going on there. Uh, I think it's 60 bucks for a pass. Uh, there's still maybe some judges kits available. He told me there was a flash sale on the yeah, judges last kit. Week, yeah. yeah. So uh, you'll have to check with him to find out what they, Did you heat that up already? No. no, no okay, no, you go ahead. I'm just gapping. Okay, okay. okay. so here we yapping. go. We've got it connected. It's uh, in green. It says connected. All right. Right. Here we go. And so, so it, it's, uh, yeah. it says that the temperature in the room right now is 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, you get yeah. to know that too. Right? I get, well, I don't know. I, okay. I don't think that's right. Oh, the seat's going up. No, it sounds it's going up right. because you're standing beside oh, the Oh, now it's going to go up because, oh, 72. So you got the dirty hands. Yeah, Anil, 73. Keep going up, it, it'll go up. Yeah. Right now, right now. Right. So, yeah, this is Somebody just a, left some remnants. Some infrared in temperature oh. center. Hey, you should mm, take this I away wonder who did that. Should I take this away from you? So, the Prairie Harvest Medicinal some Cup. Some of you look up. guilty. Sorry. It's all right. It's Prairie Harvest Medicinal Cup uh, coming up uh, this weekend. Starts Friday. Uh, Pass is still available. You can camp there. Uh, Mike Rita, who we talked about earlier in the show, he's going there to be the host for the whole weekend. So, I'll tell you, Alum has pulled off and yeah, Mike is in great. getting Mike to be there all weekend. Uh, he's uh, he's going to have a blast. I'm sure right, he's going to have a blast. Here we go. All right, so you can watch. Is it going up? Yep. We're at 700 degrees right yeah, now. That's going to be a little bit too much. Well, yeah, yeah. I buy it. Wow, yeah, you can do the dab. Well, I'll, I, I, I will, what do you mean I can do the dab? Well, because I'm going to be holding I've been the phone. voluntold. Great. Yeah, I'm going to be holding the phone. Now you got to wait for don't, it to come down. Don't, don't touch all right, it now. see, now it's coming down. Somebody can let me know when we're at 420. So you don't want to heat your your uh, banger up too much because no. that's not good. Because the 420 yeah. professor is yeah. going to smoke with this. Yeah, right. So we're at 567 right now. Yeah. So, so very hard temperature of your bowl. Prairie yeah. Harvest Medicinal Cup coming up this weekend. It's going to be a blast. They're going to have the Cannabis Olympics continue on. This is the 10th year for the for the Prairie Harvest Cup. Uh, Jeff's had 10 years to continue to improve on it, and he does every year. I'm sure this will be no different. The Friendly Cup where people from all across Canada and other places as well come together to have as much fun as, as anybody has anywhere. Uh, it's a friendly cup on purpose. It, uh, it grew that name organically with 
you know, people that were just coming there and experiencing what Green the Prairies Island. has to offer with respect to its people. And its people is one of the charms that the, that the Prairies offers for sure. If you go there, if you're stuck in any way, you're going to get help. If you need anything, they're going to feed you even if you're not hungry. They're going to force food down you. Uh, they're a very, very friendly bunch. And the, the cup is no different that happens there. So check that out this Friday. So how did that all work? What temperature did we do we that We did at 390. But we don't have a carb cap here, but yeah, 390. Oh, we don't have a carb cap. No. You know what? You guys may not see the smoke, but I got the flavor. You got the flavor, right? Improvising. What's the place you mean? Well, 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 isn't that the way it's supposed well, to be? Well, look at that. J-Mac jumped in. Again, J-Mac. <laughs> His ears must have been burning. Right? <laughs> He's like, I'm here. I'm uh, here. I love you, uh, buddy. I'm uh, glad uh, you... I'm glad you can take a joke, that's for sure. I really respect you. Uh, yeah. All right. So what did he jump so you're in? You're using a hot surface. Did, did he jump in with or without his pants on? That's what I want to know. <laughs> he's not there anymore? Well, no, okay. he is. Yeah, he's there. There he is. Right. Well, we're gonna I get made it work. Bowl. Yes, he did. Congrats. All right, so that's the downstairs. <laughs> so that's, that's how that works. Your bowl is. Wait till uh, 420 or a little bit under. and uh, I thought it was a little bit higher. Uh, it depends what you're burning. Yeah. It does. Or vaporizing. Yeah. And, and that's kind of the point. That's what I was getting at. And still got a dab out of it. That's all that matters. Yeah. Well, that's what I get, was getting at earlier. Really, in, in vaporizing, <laughs> there's not supposed to be a lot of smoke. Mm -hmm. You know, it, 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 it's the vapor. Yeah, it, you're exactly. just vaporizing. Yeah. And, and so a Woo. clear vapor is a hit. Yeah. People I, like it. I like the vapor. It's much better than the smoke because I tell you you shouldn't smoke, right? right. So now I'm ingesting the vapor is what we do. When we have humidifiers in our room, or when we have colds, we have to, you know, to de uh, dehumidify our room, right? When you have a so, cold, so, so perfect. We do do that, right? Are, are, are we leaving? Oh, we are. Man. I got really? glasses. Okay, I'm gonna take this here piece of Kingsman weed for myself. Thanks. Oh, you are? Are you? I think yeah. On my well, next well, show, I'm gonna be wearing the bag guys. for it because that's what I brought for. It. Oh. And you, you, you're, you're, uh, you're staying at my house, right? Well, he's a stain on your house? He's I am. Staying, staying, yeah, staying, yeah. A large. large. Uh, I and suspect on the couch. Much stain. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, stain. today I got glasses, but today I'm not wearing them yet. Maybe by the next show I'll have glasses on, but I'm not even sure about that. Uh, only for reading. But uh, Dabster, you can you can find them out. Uh, just I'm sure, just Google Dabster. The Dabster app, I the, believe. The Dabster app. Yep. Uh, you can download Perfect that dabs from there. every time. Perfect. Yeah. Ne ne never, or, or the other side of it, never a bad dab. Never, never bad another dab. bad dab. Yeah. I, I know that all dabbers uh, experience that where the bowl was too hot or yeah. the bowl wasn't hot enough, and yeah. you waste your dab. Yep. Yeah. And uh, so this will this will keep you from wasting dabs. It'll keep you from burning out your bowl. And, and it'll teach you how, yeah, how, you know, how long you about how long you should be hitting yeah. these things up, and you'll yeah. be an expert in no time. Probably be able to, day. you know, see somebody there, uh, you know, with your bowl all aglow, and go, "Hey, buddy, you're just, you know, you don't need to you do that." You just need a dabster. Just need a dabster. Or maybe by that time, he's a dab master himself because yeah. of his dab because of what they dab learned from the dabster. Dab dab master. dab master. right? How about dab masters? You dab, use dabster. He's a, he's there you a, go. Say <laughs> that three times in a row in the morning. Dab masters, you use dabsters. Yeah, but try not doing it. Yeah. And, and, and the dab, dab masters dab learn dab from dab masters. masters. Yes, right? there you go. Right. Yeah, yeah, if you're going to be a dab master, you got to have a dabster to learn. Yeah. Well, thanks, thanks Turner. I appreciate having you here. Thanks that was for great. Having me call if you were here, I would have had to say everything that had to be said there on the Mum Cup, and I didn't have that in me. No. <laughs> no. There's lots to do still. There's lots Stern, to improve on. Sterling did a great job. Uh, you know, he really did keep the energy up and uh, well, educated thanks, a bunch man. of people about lots of things. And it was he made it a fun time. And, uh, and that's the point. I'm a droning, droning on old uh, person who has to talk about negative yeah, stuff you sometimes. Did great too, buddy. Well, I tried my best to depress them as best I could before Mike Rita came on. Because, uh, you know, you gotta, you got to set the audience up for, uh, you know, the door to like, holy shit, the federal government won't even help these people save lives. What's Quickly. going on with that? That's really depressing. And Mike Rita is coming to the stage. And then they're all yeah. happy again. And so, yeah. yeah, I did my part in doing that. And you did your part. And that was fun. Well, and you I hear, did your part. That's yeah. right. And I hear... Uh, I heard that uh, Canamatch got a boost this Thank weekend. Thank you. Yeah, we did pretty good. Yeah, we're in Australia, uh, Japan, Taiwan. Taiwan. Yeah, uh, the states. So about eighty people joined uh, just this weekend from. The so podcast. if you're watching the show from any of those places, you too can join Canamatch.ca and know that there's somebody in your area. 
which is good. <laughs> that enjoys cannabis. Just in like your that. area, man, they could be in Taiwan, Australia. Yeah, we are you, know, you could now. find yourself a new pen pal yeah. just We're, through cannabis. Yeah, yeah. A new and share what link. pal? A pen pal. Pen pal? I thought, I thought it was a, a toke pal. Yeah, toke, toke pal, pal, pen yeah. pal, whatever. No, we're, not, we're not writing letters. Are oh, well, 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 we still we're smoking pens these days? I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm right. not against vaporizing pens. I think right? that's awesome, yeah, yeah. but I don't think we should yeah. limit it to just that. I think that uh, well, yeah, like, the full exactly, range but, of cannabinoid therapeutics should be available to the right, connoisseurs. But we, can't, but, but we can't say cannabinoid par- therapeutics. You want to single out the pen users? I guess that's okay. No, toke, but... Toke buddy. Yeah, toke buddy. Toke buddy. There you go. Instead of pen pal, toke buddy. Right, but, but but are the people in Taiwan going to understand the term token? I don't know. We have to ask somebody in Taiwan. We have to probably Taiwan interpret it. To That's what they, I mean. It comes and out that way, yes. Yeah. Interpretation yeah. doesn't always go But um, Cannabis.ca, it's an awesome app. Uh, we can use it to help unite the community. It's a great way to find cannabis if you don't know where to get it. If you're new in an area and you got to hook up with somebody, you don't know anybody, if you're a member of Cannabis.ca, you can find somebody in that area. They can help you get hooked up if you yeah. need. Uh, these are really, really important Meet things. Friends. You can... Meet people, you know, and then Glenn's talked about it before, about how, you know, sometimes when you're in the dating world there, you got to keep some things, uh, you know, on the down low until you really get to know who you're dating. And sometimes you, it's a while into dating somebody before you ask that question about smoking weed. That wouldn't happen to me, yeah. but could happen to other people. I know what it's like in small towns and in yeah. small, you know, in, in, business, in business environments and things like that. So this way it gets it out of the way right away. You know who you're talking to is already a lover of the herb. And because and, uh, you kept it secret, you got in trouble because you had been lying for the last six months, right? So, so there's none of that happening, man. That's it. it, it you know, everybody's up front. You don't have to ask, say, hey, psst, hey, man, you got any weed? So you can use it does. to find me. <laughs> you, can, you can use it to find a friend. You can use it to find some, uh, you know, just a good night somewhere. Or you yeah. can find your forever lover if that's what you that's are looking forward to. You never know. Cannabis.ca. It can make together. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> All right. We'll see you next week, sir. See you next week. Thank All you right, so much thanks. for coming on. Thank you, Sterling. Peace. I'm out. We'll see you next Glenn, time you're Glenn, in town. Yes. Later. Yeah. At your house. Yeah. 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 And we'll yeah. see and you later, Yeah. Right? And I know you. You're that guy with we'll, the stuff, we'll, right? We'll get a room, you guys. You know, show the room. Okay, well, take, fine. Take your chair with you so we can clear out those details on take the Take my chair with me. I see. <laughs> you, know, you know what? The audience is going to be here. Never coming back here. Uh, until next time. All right, not until next time. You can't come back until next time. That's 100% for sure. I've said it. I'm strong. I'm powerful. I stick to my decisions. Guns. All right. Whoa, I got a dab on my hand now. What's oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's got to go over that way. my son not cleaning up his mess again? I don't know. All right. <laughs> so, uh, that brings us to the uh, update on the CSP healing wave uh, situation, as we do every show. Um, I wish I had new good news to report. I guess I don't have uh, new bad news to report. Um, I guess the good news is is that we uh, finally got some attention paid to us by the CBC. Uh, we had a good interview yesterday with Gloria Makarenko. You can look that up on the CBC website. Myself and uh, the Professor Dr. MJ Malloy and, uh, and Brian Carlisle, a, a patient of ours for a long time who's been using us to access the, the medical products that he needs that he can't find anywhere else. And it is very, very difficult to find those products that people really need these days. Uh, when the legalization was happening, Trudeau said that uh, the medical people did not need to worry, that uh, they would have their needs uh, looked after, and that certainly has not been the case. Uh, here in British Columbia, with the way that the uh, BC uh, provincial government has rolled out legalization, uh, the, store, the stores are extremely expensive. Uh, for people that don't have bank accounts, they're hard to access. If you don't have ID, they're hard to access. But most importantly is that they're not there designed to get people the high-dose edibles that they need. And that's the real, the real key to this. That was the one that prompted myself and so many other people to go to City Hall in Vancouver many years ago when they were going to regulate uh, the cannabis dispensaries but take away several revenue streams. It was the more the cannabis edibles than anything else that we were concerned about because they weren't going to allow edibles. And for the majority of the customers of the dispensaries that were operating in Vancouver at that time, it was the high-dose edibles that was the ones that were needed by their most needy clients. So to eliminate those people from being able to get access was going to be a very, very serious thing for a lot of people. And so as activists in Vancouver, uh, many of us, all close to 200 people, um, went and talked to the city uh, when that was let, let open for people's comments, and yet the city still went ahead 
and eliminated edibles from what was uh, legal to be sold at these illegal dispensaries, which is a crazy thing all in itself. But the the government managed to manipulate all of these dispensary owners into believing that they could get licenses and they could continue to help their people if they would just follow the rules and show that they were good corporate citizens. And so they they all bought into that. They all, of course, they did. They had to. They they had to do whatever they could to continue to help the patients that they had, and that's how they all felt about it. So they all went through all those hoops, and they all did what they had to do, and none of them were willing, well, almost none of them. Sorry, Reg, I know there was you and a few others that continued to sell the high-dose edibles uh, through all of that, or maybe you did, didn't at the end, I'm not sure. Uh, Reg has a legal store now. But uh, that's what many of them believed was going to happen, is that they were going to get legal stores, and that they had to comply with the law. And so high-dose edibles became a real rarity uh, amongst those people that really needed it. And uh, at that same time, uh, being struck with another opioid crisis here in Vancouver and actually all across North America, uh, it was just a bad timing, in my opinion, with respect to taking away edibles at a time when I knew and, and others around me knew that those high-dose edibles was a vehicle for uh, assisting people through withdrawal. So that started the cannabis substitution program. And uh, it was about uh, almost six years ago now that it was conceived by myself and uh, I went to Van Du and presented to their board the idea of just making cannabis high dose edibles as easily available as possible to the people that were here on the downtown east side or whoever would be willing to come and line up and get them. And with unanimous approval in my belt from them, I went to Vancouver City Council and presented the, the idea to them and, and told them of my support and my history in helping people and my advocacy for dispensaries, the fact that I had one myself and I had, I had learned there about the value of high-dose edibles and getting people through withdrawal and for all their other medical needs. But City Council listened to me but wouldn't respond and wouldn't support. And from there I went to the Vancouver Police Department and presented it with our lawyer, Rob Laurie, who just stepped up and decided to help us. And uh, the police department was uh, receptive to the idea. They uh, said there was not much they could do either way for us, but uh, I got my hand shook a few times and I got the email of the deputy chief, Steve Ray. And uh, from there, we lobbied City Hall for two more months to try to get them on board with uh, running the program. And with uh, failing there, but succeeding in getting donations over that same two months, it became time just to hand them out. And so arriving at Van Du one Saturday afternoon with a few boxes full of edibles to hand out and some bags, I asked permission to set up a table and away we went. I repeated that process uh, several times over the next uh, few weeks, but I had gone uh, Saturdays uh, three times in a row. I'd been there at noon on Saturday. That was the, the time that worked good for me. And on the fourth Saturday that I arrived there, there was a long lineup of people. There was like 100 people. And uh, some of those people were there to ask me about what I was doing and ask if they could help me. And uh, that's basically the birth of the Cannabis Substitution Program. And that's uh, five and a half years ago. That was uh, February, five years ago. Uh, from there, we just did it. We just kept getting donations. We just kept handing it out. And uh, uh, every Saturday for the first year. And then we continued two days a week, Thursdays and Sundays after that for another year and a half when Vancouver City Council finally got on board. Dr. M.J. Malloy had been doing studies and research on the project as we had that and other avenues that he was pursuing to do with cannabis uh, as a replacement therapy for opioids. Because of his work, because of our success, the City Council in Vancouver passed a unanimous motion to support low barrier access to cannabis, which prompted us to have a meeting with City Council, with, well, at least with Rebecca Bly. She's the one who put the motion forward. Uh, it was a very positive meeting with myself and Jody Emery and someone from Van Du and someone from the Green Cross. And we left there with an understanding that we'd find a storefront and move into that. And we did that in good faith that we would be able to continue to serve the needs of this neighborhood and that City Hall was behind us. They were supposed to send city staff to just evaluate what we were doing, seeing if we were meeting the needs of the neighborhood. But instead, city licensing just showed up randomly because they wander the streets looking for places that are open that don't have a license and decided that we shouldn't be here without a license doing what we were doing and uh, immediately issued a, a warning letter to our landlord that uh, his property may be at risk. And uh, we then tried to get them on board with us. Well, they said, you have to uh, apply through the provincial government. Turned out we had to apply through the federal government. 
So we did. We applied uh, as swiftly as we could, as comprehensively as we could. We've done everything, every step of the way, to try to do the right thing, to try to get the governments on board that they need to be on board, the police on board, and all the harm reduction groups in the area know well about us and support us, and have given us letters of support and, and more. So, in the store, with city licensing, refusing to issue us a license until Health Canada does at that point, and eventually us having to be ev evicted from the store to protect the landlord's interests because his lawyer wasn't convinced that the city wouldn't go after him. We thought they wouldn't, but that wasn't good enough for him. So we were evicted from the store, at which point we moved into an RV. So the, all those people that lined up for all that we had all those years, many of them were regular people that were there every time. Many of them had come to rely on us for what we're doing. So when we got the store, and we were going to transition away from having a lineup on the street to having people be able to come to a store, we did the best we could to overlap those two things and get the people as best we could at the store. We got them at the store and then we registered them as members. Got their contact information and gave them a number. From that point on, they were able to come and see us every four days for 420 milligrams of high-dose edibles. That's over 100 milligrams a day as a boost, as, a, as an assistance for people that will use it for, well, whatever they want, right? We're not screening people because that's part of low barrier. We're not asking people to identify themselves as drug users. We're not asking people to identify themselves as being sick or injured because that's nobody's right to do that. It's their right to be able to discreetly access whatever it is they think might want to help them. And that's that for that. So that's what we did. And we registered 250 people and capped it. We had pretty much thought we got everybody in those 250, and we got a few that weren't regulars in the lineup, but, you know, they got into in, in those few weeks that we were registering people before we capped it. As it turned out, there was a few people that came along afterwards that said, oh my God, I just couldn't find you, I didn't know, you know, I didn't know, but they were people that we've been helping for years, we didn't turn them away. So now we have 268 people that we've got in the program that we're helping like that. And we've been doing this for five and a half years, like I say. Health Canada, having gotten an application from us to, uh, to allow us to have licenses to do what we had been doing by that time for three and a half years, that's how long it was after we put our application in. We're right around this time, uh, two years ago, we put in our application to Health Canada. We've been doing what we've been doing for three and a half years, with no trouble, with no problems, no arrests, no interference, no complaints, nothing. Just success. Lots of success. Documented success. Time after time after time. We sent Health Canada an application so that we could have licenses to continue what we were doing, and we wanted licenses for our suppliers because those are compassionate people who really enjoy the fact they love the idea that they can give back to this crisis that we're having here by helping us with product. So we wanted them licensed too. There's no reason they couldn't be scrutinized to some degree or the products that are produced couldn't be scrutinized to some degree that would allow it to be safe enough to get to people who would otherwise be using street drugs and who knows what else. So we sent that application to Health Canada, but not just that. We sent them an application for a temporary emergency exemption from prosecution or any interference from the Cannabis Act. They said when they got it, and they acknowledged the day after, both of them, Health Canada and Patty Haydu, the federal health minister, acknowledged to us in emails that they had gotten our submissions and that they would try to answer them in a timely fashion. That's what they said. And then we waited. We waited until December, from September to December. Well, by this time, we've been evicted from the store. We didn't get any emergency exemption that would have allowed us to stay in the store. We went to court and asked a judge to give us six months, and he said he had no confidence that we'd be able to get licenses from Health Canada within six months, and that we were there with unclean hands anyway, because what we're doing is illegal, to provide medicinal flowers to people who are otherwise injecting deadly, tainted powders. So, kicked out of the store, applied to Health Canada, it's now December, bought an RV, couldn't stop the program, had to figure out right away how to not stop the program, because we knew what 
Dr. Malloy had written to us in a letter that uh, Professor Zachary Walsh had written about to us in a letter that the, the local uh, uh, harm reduction nurse in the neighborhood had written us in support of what we're doing. We knew. We knew what they already confirmed in their letters. That if we stopped providing the people that we'd been providing for with what we're providing, there was a few providings in a row, we're providers after all, that many of those people would be put at risk of dying. Because many of those people would be, A, no longer able to access that which they had been using in place of those other substances for all the issues that they have, whatever they are, and trust me, they all have issues that they need to deal with, and B, the issue that they're dealing with right now front and center is, is that they've lost their supply of something that was keeping them alive and giving them a healthy and good life because of a corrupt government who doesn't love them anymore and never did when the truth is told. And that's traumatic for people. So now these poor traumatized people that found a solution that they were getting through us are now traumatized even more by a government who should be caring for them. But there we were. It was December now. We're in an RV. We didn't, didn't miss a day, by the way. Got the RV overnight to, during the, the eviction from the store. And when we were evicted from the store, we right away were open six days a week, eight hours a day in the RV. And a lot of time has passed since then. Uh, we've gone through some of the uh, most uh, uh, hot summers, like some of the hottest summers that we've ever had here in Vancouver. In fact, uh, last year's summer with the heat dome was uh, one of the hottest recorded anywhere in the world, like ever, like holy smokes. And my team of people were willing to sit out there in that heat and continue servicing people's needs. We've gone through some pretty cold winters here. It's not winters like some other places in the world. It wasn't like the coldest place ever. But cold is cold. And uh, it's hard to deal with the cold. And, uh, you know, we're not all healthy here. And yet my team never misses a day. Constantly out there helping people through heat, through cold, through whatever. Through the threat of the police. Through, through having our stuff stolen two weeks after we were in the RV by the police. The anti-vending unit that knew nothing about nothing to do with us or anything, just, you're not allowed to vend cannabis out of an RV on a street on a street side. And so they, they stole all of our stuff. They didn't charge anybody with anything. They can get away with that. They can just keep all that stuff and use it for their picnics or whatever else they want to use it for. I don't know, but we never got it back. It was illegal cannabis. What does that mean? Dangerous cannabis? Because I'm not sure that that's what it is. It's not. It's medicine for people. It's stuff that we were going to get from people in this neighborhood that would have replaced the use of the other stuff that's killing them, either slowly or in an instant. Because the people that haven't died in an instant here yet are dying slowly from these drugs. And you can see it. They're the visible addicts. They're the ones who are having their, their innards just eaten away by the poisons that they're putting in there. And if it's not fentanyl, it's something else. Everything's cut here. Everything's always cut because it makes more money for people. And what do they cut it with? They don't care. They don't care. The government should care. The government should care about what we're doing. The government should be making sure that, that, that we should be supported in being out here helping people through the hot and the cold and the rest of it. So we put our application in. And a few months go by, and now it's December, and they say, oh, we're sorry it's taking so long. So they know it's taking long. They admitted that. They apologized for it. They said it was complicated. I'm not sure what's complicated about it. They're not figuring out how to do something. We figured out how to do something. All they need to do is put a piece of paper together in front of somebody that can sign it for us and give it to us to put on the wall. That's all they need to do. They don't need to figure no shit out. If they want to know what we're doing, well, that's in our application. Or they could come here and check it out themselves. But whatever it is that we're doing, they need to support that. If there's a, a chance that we're saving just a few people, they need to come and support that. This is a health care emergency. We need to find all the ways that we can to save all the people that we can, be it a, a small amount of people or a large amount of people. If it's working, if it helps, right now, in the face of a, in the face of a public health emergency, our public servants, Health Canada, they need to come and be here and find out if anything's working, and if it is, support it, 
encourage it, make it better. That's their job. That's what we're paying them for. But instead, they sit in Ottawa, in these rooms in this complex called Health Canada, and they consult with stakeholders. Stakeholders like the police. Stakeholders like the people that supply alcohol. Stakeholders, no doubt, that supply pharmaceuticals. Stakeholders who look after the prison complexes. Stakeholders who want to make sure that they're not going to be interfered with what they're doing. All those people that are making money off of prohibition. People training dogs to sniff out marijuana. All those people that are corporate. You know, they got lots of resources. They got these companies. They've been making a ton of money off of prohibition for a long time. They all don't want it to stop. They all have the ear of their representative. They all get their needs talked about. Because when Health Canada is talking to the stakeholders about what they should do, well, they're not talking to us. They're not talking to the people who are directly affected. They're not talking to other places that are actually offering solutions. Because unless it seems it protects the interests of those other stakeholders, they're not interested. So now, here we are, all this time later. It's now been a year and a half more since that meeting that we had with them that, that December. Another year and a half since then, when they said early January. Are we waiting for next January? Is that the one they meant? It's bad on me for not asking them, I guess that's for sure. Silly me for thinking they meant next January, which was two Januaries ago now. And it's not like anybody's being seriously affected by this delay that's happening with Health Canada and the federal government. It's not like people are dying, is it? Oh, right, they're still dying. It's not like if we could have reached more people that we could have saved more people. Oh, yeah, we could have. And we could have reached more people if we had that little piece of paper with a signature on it. If we then had that sort of respect and credibility that would allow us to continue to evolve our program, to comply with regulations that make sense, to be safe about our supply as best we can in all the ways that we can, in the way that, because we're not just dealing cannabis here, we're not just selling and providing cannabis here, that's not, that's not enough for this opioid crisis. You've got to have the people that are doing that compa dispense compassion, dispense proper information, find resources for these people. There's a whole bunch that is done here that Health Canada needs to support because we are a hub. We are an information outlet. We are a research hub. If Health Canada thinks that we don't provide the grounds for research that would get us an exemption, well then use us for research. Because we've got a whole bunch of marginalized people here that need to be interacted with that you could collect a lot of important data about if you really wanted to help them. And these are the abused, traumatized children of our society who are struggling to live as adults that are probably the most important ones that any, any, any compassionate society would ever want to do. I think you judge a society by how well it looks after the less able. And these are the less able. And these are the ones that are being left out of legalization of cannabis, but way worse than that. They're being left out of compassion from our federal public servants, and, and probably the province and the municipal too, because none of them have ever come to see us here either. They voice their support, they write letters of support, that's great, that's fine. They say they're spending money on support, well they haven't given us any here, I'm not sure where that money goes. It goes into treatment in some cases. Treatment which really doesn't work for people. Treatment that puts a lot of money into the pockets of those people that are running the treatment centers. In many cases, friends of government, insiders, people with the money and resources to get those positions. Corruption goes on and the corruption goes on. So we're not going to go away in the face of that. We are going to continue. Um, the program now, is we have, uh, we've, we've reached our final stages of uh, our submissions to Health Canada who has sent us the intent to deny. And maybe they'll uh, 
they'll agree with our submissions and maybe they won't deny and maybe we'll get a license. That's our hope. We're still in court. Uh, VPD, I didn't even mention that in this particular uh, ramblings about uh, you know our situation that I like to do every week because uh, you know there's new people every week watching and I want every show to be in itself the explanation about what we're doing here and what's going on here in and of itself. And so yes, uh, in May we were raided by the VPD in our RV where we've been providing this service for all this time because they ran an investigation to see if we were selling cannabis without a license which you didn't need an investigation to discover probably should just come and talk to us or even just you know stand there for a little bit it didn't take six months of taxpayers money and now the prosecution has the file and they're they're salivating over it oh my god look how easy it is to prove that these people were selling cannabis let's let's get another feather in our cap and you know win this one because oh my god that's easy to win because we weren't hiding anything we were telling everybody about it constantly asking for permission because apparently you need permission to save people's lives I didn't know that was the case I thought you didn't need anybody's permission if you could save somebody's life at that moment in time I thought it was a criminal offense to interfere with somebody who was attempting to save somebody's life but I don't think any of those things are real in our justice community it doesn't seem that way I'm told by lawyers that oh no you being interfered with your ability to save these people's lives even though it's extremely demonstrable that that's what's going on is never going to be used against the government and those people in those places. But uh, definitely there's, uh, there's more we could do. <laughs> definitely they need to, uh, to let us do it. And uh, we will continue, no matter what, in as best fashion as we can. Above board, uh, with flags flying, and uh, proud of ourselves uh, in the open, or maybe forced into the darkness and into an underground situation of uh, worrying about our liberty and uh, struggling to get people the medicine that the government won't allow them access to. I don't know what's going to happen. This has been a story that's been a cliffhanger since the beginning. We really don't have any, any real moments of, of cliffhanging because they're all moments of cliffhanging. Yeah, we're going to court next September 7th again to meet a prosecution who may or may not have educated themselves about what it is that we're doing here. I think if they really understood at all, they will withdraw the charges. That's what I'm expecting. That's my prediction. Before we ever get to stand before a judge and provide evidence in whatever fashion, I believe they'll withdraw the charges. But in the meantime, there we are. If that's a cliffhanger, we got one little one. <laughs> will or will not Health Canada deny our application in the end? Well, we'll find out. I'm not sure we'll find out fast. Uh, this is an intent to deny that uh, we've had time to answer. We have now answered it, and we'll send that in before next week. And then what? I don't know. I don't think that they're immediately going to say yes or no, because that couldn't be right, because they've got to have time to look at our submission. And if they said no right away, well, they wouldn't have looked at it properly, would they? Or maybe, because they could have said yes right away to our application if they looked at it. So we'll see. We'll see. I suspect it'll drag on for a while longer. I suspect that we'll have our charges withdrawn from the courts, but who knows? Maybe we'll get a day in court. That would be a good episode of the THC show, wouldn't it? I don't know if they'll let the media in there in the form of Pot TV to film the shenanigans of this uh, this uh, uh, corporate uh, <laughs> corporate corruption that's unfolding before our very eyes. I doubt they're going to let us have that kind of TV, but we'll see. In the meantime, I guess that kind of wraps it up. That's where we're at. We're waiting for all these things. We're still in the RV. Uh, we're still providing our services. And, uh, you know, we'll continue to do that. In the meantime, uh, we're going to need all you people to do what you do. And uh, I'll talk about that in just a minute because I think we're going to go outside and, uh, and just uh, give you a little bit of reality TV as we show you that the RV is not an illusion that I've just created for this particular show for those new viewers. There really is an RV parked on the side of the road on the downtown east side that is a dispensary and probably one of the better dispensaries in the world. Uh, it's not flashy, it's not comfortable, it doesn't look like the government stores with all the nice shiny glass and all the cabinets and stuff like that. It's just an old RV. But it's very, uh, it's very quaint and it's usable and the people have come to love it here. And, uh, and that's what's real. So, I think we're ready. get out of the chair so 
as we open the mystery door, once again, the THC Show weekly report on the weather in Vancouver is a beautiful sunny day. Hey, you people out there, how are you? Hey, Neil. You want to be on the Pod TV Show? Hi, how are you? Yes. You want to wave? You want to say hi? Yes. Okay. You girls, how you go? Hello. Hello. Hi. I've been disabled for a lot of years, and... Once I started smoking marijuana, I started to walk a bit, and it's helping me very yeah. much. Neil, if it wasn't for you it's people, not working anymore. wasn't for you people, oh, I wouldn't great. be here. Thank you for helping us disable people. Thank you. Uh, no, for sure, for sure. I had people, no, I'm not talking about this right now. Okay, no, for sure. Bye, sir. All good. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so here we are. It's a beautiful sunny day. Uh, the RV is where it always is, short of a police raid. And I guess I'm back to saying any day without a police raid is a good day. Seems like a long time ago. I remember I used to post, uh, maybe today's the day that uh, Health Canada will say yes to us. And I, I remember I said that for a long, long time, over and over again, every day, I would post, maybe today's the day that we would get our license to be able to uh, have legitimacy for what we're doing here to some degree. But I stopped saying that a long, long time ago because it just got like, holy smokes, how long am I going to say this for, right? But uh, I'm back to kind of saying any day without a raid is a good day, so that's good. Um, hopefully in the future I can get a little more optimistic about that and go back to the hey maybe today's the day that we get permission because I think that's really what needs to happen here um, everything is in our favor to have that happen the route that we took all of the things that we have done the, the support that we have from all of the people that understand us and know us the harm reduction groups the politicians there's a whole bunch of good people that support what we're doing that know what we're doing and uh, one of these days all of us together somehow we're going to get this done and, and the people of Canada and hopefully around the world will have the dignity of being able to walk discreetly into a store like they could walk into any other store and get the products that they need to help themselves without a whole bunch of government interference and ridiculous regulations and restrictions that are only there to protect corporate greed and to protect the government that should be taken to task at some point for having spent so much Canadian tax dollars and so much of our time in, in, in almost a hundred years now of using our resources, our time to persecute and penalize people for a plant that should never have been illegal at all, period, in the first place, it was all just a big scam to protect corporate interests and to put down minorities. And it needs to stop, and it, and it needs to stop maybe here in Canada before the hundred year mark. So, Health Canada, you have the opportunity. You can put an end to what's been going on with cannabis for all of this time by allowing low barrier access and getting it done before next January 23rd. We don't even need to wait that long. But on January 24th, we'll be into our second century of shame here in Canada with a government that has known better, at least should have known better, and from here on in absolutely does know better, and better not continue to ruin people's lives, to spend our tax dollars, and to, to, to rob society of all the benefits and values that can be had by this plant, especially in this serious time of need with an overdose crisis and an aging population that need to have medical relief. And, and cannabis is a great answer for many people and restricting and, and, and prohibiting its access is a serious crime against the people that need it. Um, let's go see what happens if we go to the back door. Yes, no? Oh, good, because I think maybe... Uh, I'm going to do this. Come on, this way. In any case, give us a minute. Yep, Thursday. But uh, we can knock on the door. We're we're here in our regular time. It's been uh, it's been more than four days, right? Seems to me it's been uh, exactly warm seven here days. Today and I'm tired today. Oh, okay. That's how. That's it's very warm here today. And uh, so, what are you doing about the, the the edibles in here to do with the heat? Do you have a, a bottle of ice water or something like that going on? I guess they eh? don't have ice. They melt. Yeah. I, 
So yeah, we have to do things to keep things uh, not melting, that's for sure. Do whatever it takes. You don't care about the rest. You do whatever it takes. That's what we do here. We do whatever it takes. So we got a bunch of stuff. Do you want to show the tray or what do, what do you want to do? I know you're hot. I'm tired. not long All right. Well, I'll tell you what happens here is the members that we have that I talked about earlier, they can come to this door and get their 420 milligrams uh, in whatever they choose of whatever we have. Uh, we typically have gummies from Green Wilderness, we have gummies from Gorilla Ganja, we have stuff from Joe Pepper, we have stuff from uh, uh, somewhere in Neverland, we have stuff from Dirty Dave, we have stuff from John Murray, uh, Michael the Cookie Monster. Uh, there's a whole bunch of people that give us a whole bunch of products and uh, we just make them available to people and they get to choose them as part of their 420 and then we keep track of all of that because we want to know for our own records for our, our ability to help them as individuals but also to know generally and to be able to report these things what it is that people are using do they prefer the cbd do they prefer the thc uh, how do they want to ingest that some people can't eat cookies because maybe they don't have good teeth. Other people can't tolerate gummies because they have sugar problems. It goes on and on. But we need to have all of these things. And Andrew here, he's great at making sure that we've got as much of a selection as we can have for people and, uh, and that they get what they need. And he's also the guy that keeps track of all that stuff. Sure, so. you've got to keep track of it. You can't just give it out and not, have, and not know who's getting it. Yeah, it's much better to know what's going on. Of course. Of course. They'll tell you what's... The people that get the stuff will tell you what's going on and what they need. Yeah, so every time a person takes their 420, you mark that down as to what things they took, and then we can chart all of that stuff. So yeah. we're definitely doing okay. research here as well. Here we are. Cool, mm -hmm. man. Well, I hope it's cooler days ahead. I hope so, too, because it's giving me a headache. All right. Well, you take care. Take a, take a little rest. Thanks, guys. Hey George, you got the window seat at this moment. Yeah, the time, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I want to go in there. It looks pretty warm. It, it is. is. And another hot day, eh? Extremely warm, warm and the roof is not friendly. Yeah, when the sun comes out around that it's building and starts down. hitting right on the roof, if there's not a breeze. Stuff, but you have to slow down. It's yeah. Hot. It slows you down. Yeah, well, I have to I slow down. It's too much. So are you keeping uh, hydrated? Oh, yeah. He's got his Coca-Cola. Yeah, we keep and, 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 and are you keeping uh, are you keeping uh, cannabinoided? Yeah. You got, I don't uh, have time for that. I'm uh, busy doing it. All right, I'm yeah. getting out of your window then. At this moment, quick, pull out a dab. <laughs> pull out a dab. So uh, we've got other chapters of the cannabis substitution program going on. We're not alone here. We inspired a group over in Victoria early on. A board member from Van Du took the idea over there, and they've been going strong ever since. They must be getting close to their fifth year now as well. Uh, Chris Backer in Halifax so recognized the need in his community for what we're doing here and he started the cannabis substitution program about oh, over two years ago now I have to get him to give me an exact date but I know it's been going on for over two years and uh, they're, they're providing a wonderful service there as all of these places are and uh, also in London Ontario William Hicks has got uh, he's taken over from Mary McCarty. Mary McCarty was our head baker here for a long time. Uh, when she had to go back to London, Ontario, she started the program there. It, there's such a need everywhere. When she had to go for family reasons from London, the program had to continue. And William Hicks, uh, God bless him, has taken over and running the program there. There's difficulties in doing this. It's, it's not easy at all. It's very difficult to sustain just giving away cannabis, especially if you're in some sort of a less than BC area, you know what I mean? Like the rest of Canada is not blessed like we are here in Vancouver. It was a struggle for me to get enough donations to handle the lineup of people that come all the time. And it, it's much more of a struggle for people in Halifax, for people in London, Ontario. Mary started the program in Winnipeg, but for health reasons has to suspend it for a little while, but she's gonna be doing it there again. And when she does, she's gonna need support. So if you're able to support these other cannabis substitution projects, please do, especially if you're in the area, especially if you wanna help volunteer. It's such a rewarding thing to do to be able to give back to people and see the change in them, to see the, 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 the joy that you can create by providing cannabis for them and, and when they start to really understand how it helps them, how happy they are to get it. We live that every day here of people just thanking us for, for being here and thanking us for a good night's sleep and all the other things that are, are benefiting them from the use of cannabis. So support your local cannabis substitution program. Um, what you can do for us and for, for all things like this is put your thoughts down in, on an email, put it into uh, a letter of some sort, make a phone call even. But all of these places where these people are there 
they're working for you. They're supposed to be working for us. If we don't tell them how we feel, they're going to go the way the corporations want them to go. But if they get a whole bunch of people telling them that they're going to vote for them if they do it the way that we want it done, if they're going to support these projects, then we'll support them. If they know that there's a good body of people out there that feel like that, then they might be more apt to make a decision that makes sense for people instead of just for profits. So we're here, patients first. We hope the government will uh, allow that to continue and perhaps support us. Please help us if you can. Okay, I'll go back. Life on Earth, Earth is fragile. You never know what's going to happen. You never know how long you're going to live. You don't know if the life you're going to have is going to be fun or not. All you know is, is you have this moment, you might get another. If you keep getting moments, enjoy them. Do your best. Don't focus on things that are miserable and negative and that bring you down. Focus on the good that you can do. Focus on the good that there is. Focus on the help that maybe you can give to people that you love or situations that you care about. That's real living. That's what we do with our life and our time that gives us fulfillment. So we spend it finding the, the places and the times where we can be us and help in the ways that we can help and make the world a better place and, and help in situations that need it. So do that if you can. I highly recommend it. Get involved with what we're doing if, if that suits you. Thank you. Love your family, love your friends, love the people that you meet, love even your enemies and everybody that you don't even know. They're all doing the best they can. Just be thankful that you don't have to be them. But still understand that they were probably born as relatively innocent children with the predispositions for lots of different things and most of what molded them into who they are were not their doing. So love everybody, have as much fun as you can. We'll see you next week.